Welcome to the LTR Drumming Life Through Rhythm podcast. I'm fired up to be with you today. Let's become our best selves through drumming. This is going to be really cool. And this is a special one for me because this is all about one of my mentors and teachers who's no longer with us but left a really big impression on me and many, many drummers around the world, Jim Blackley. And if you've ever heard of him, he's one of the great educators, artists, and human beings of the drum worldwide community. And he's often looked at as as almost like a Yoda figure to drummers around the world. Like he, he's revered, he's made such a big impact. And his son, Kaja Blackley, if you go to Facebook, he set up something called the Jim Blackley Appreciation Page. And it's just beautiful. You see people's messages just from from years past that and they just say the impact that Jim has had on their drumming and their life and it's it's just beautiful to see these messages like I studied with Jim in 1984 and I still think every day of the, the things he taught me that made me the person I am like you see this consistent message on that page and as I knew Jim for many years you you also heard him him talk and his message to you was very consistent and i saw a, a speech he gave for a lifetime achievement and it just struck me you know like a couple of years before he passed away and it's like wow like he spent his lifetime really spreading this like one consistent message to people like be the best person you can be have your life taken care of and in order in every space and delete the unessential strive for something higher and be a musician not just a drummer but a musician serving something greater than yourself and be an honest person be a kind person and live with virtues and he just really challenged you to be a new version of yourself and a better version of you which comes out on the drums And there were certain people in my life that had that impact, almost like the original life through rhythm concept of the person you are is the drummer that you become and how life is drumming, but drumming is life and how the two are connected. So anybody that studied under Jim, you really hear that message of like he, you know, it was was great. He turned you into a better drummer but it was life lessons at the same time. And as you grew as a person, you saw your drumming improve. And as you saw your drumming improve, you noticed you as a person was becoming a much higher version of yourself that maybe you even ever dreamed was possible. So it changed my life. And this is a special one. So I was interviewed by a drummer from Toronto named Joe Yanuzzi. And I was interviewed for him because he was doing his dissertation at York University on the impact of Jim Blackley. And it's called Zen and the Art of Drumming. So Zen and the Art of Drumming and a study on Jim Blackley and his impact. And he interviewed many, many, many of Jim's students and I was one of them. So this is an audio of that interview. And it was so cool for me to like, reflect on his message and what he taught me and how he impacted me and Joe's questions were great. So if you'd like to, this is like a, a, a big deep dissertation. So if you're into reading the thesis and you want to go deep, I'll put it in the show notes and that's, that's a fantastic job Joe did. And this interview was, was, I was one of the people contributing to this. And there's also a great interview that's in the archives of Modern Drummer from 1984. And it's an interview, it's it's not 200 pages, so you can can, can go into that first maybe, but it's a a great Modern Drummer interview that I found in in the vaults. And it really goes into his philosophy and what he he taught to all the students. So check that out as well. I'll also put that in the show notes. And I think you're gonna love this interview. And you'll see if you're in the LTR drumming world, life through rhythm, you'll see how these lessons really help shape what what I teach and and how I empower drummers in the community and how I'm trying to get better. I'm striving to become my best self through drumming as well every day. 
And one of the big lessons here, one of the big takeaways I want you to notice in this interview is that what Jim Blackley did was really challenge you to delete the unessential. Delete the unessential. So in my, my LTR drumming book, Life Through Rhythm, I, I call it the Michelangelo metaphor. The Michelangelo metaphor. And basically the great artist Michelangelo, he would see a slab of marble before he would start making one of his iconic sculptures. And he said that he could see the, the sculpture and the art within the slab of marble. All that he had to do was get rid of the excess marble that didn't belong and the statue and the art would be revealed. So that's really how we are. It's like our voice is there within us ready to come out. We just have to get rid of what is in the way, what doesn't belong there. And then that inner expression and that art and that, that sculpture that we want to give to the world through drumming, that is right. That has been there all along and that will be revealed. And that's what Jim did with a lot of his students. And I believe we need this more today than ever. Like we live in the age of dramatic distraction. It's a war and focus is really the, the skill that we need and intense focus, laser like focus on the essential was one thing that Jim Blackley taught me. And I go into this in, in my course, the LTR method, and I've got a lot of free content. So connect with me at chrislesso.com and I'll get you some of this stuff and I'll even show you a bit right now. It's really exciting and it's really life changing because I've encountered so many drummers around the world that they've got all the books and they're going over to all the videos and they're practicing, they're doing this and that. And, they're, and us as drummers, we're all energetic, hyperactive, passionate people. You know what I'm talking about. And we just want it all and we want it right now. And so Jim was just great at like deleting the unessential and it's what I do with my own practice. We simplify and I do this with all the LTR drummers around the world in the community. We, so ironically, it's not getting more and more and more. It's deleting the unessential. And one way that he, Jim Blackley did this is, is by really doesn't matter how, like he would have great drummers travel all, all around the world to see him. And I can remember when I saw him, Sometimes someone after me is like, oh, that person just arrived yesterday from like London, England, and they're here to spend two days with Jim. And I'm like, whoa, I only drove an hour to get here. Like this person took an airplane you know, across the ocean to go study with Jim. Johnny Fay from the Tragically Hip was also one of his students in his later years, right before uh, Jim passed away. And like, this is one of the best bands in, in the world. And if anybody doesn't need a drum lesson, it's him. But here he is going to take his drumming to the next level. And no matter who you were, Jim would just take you to like slow, meditative quarter notes. And like really slow. And I'll demonstrate this right now at 40 BPM and even sometimes a little slower than that. Maybe even going to 30 or 40 BPM. No matter who you were, quarter notes at 40, you're gonna sing them, so you're gonna use the voice, and you're gonna go really slow. And this, you know, your mind starts going crazy at first, your ego gets in the way, ah, I'm, I'm way better than quarter notes, I should be doing something cool. And then eventually though, everything settles. So there's a Zen expression in, in meditation, it's like still water runs deep. Still water runs deep. So. Jim Blackley just knew this. She would slow down and you would just start to, you know, breathe, start to listen to the tone, start to listen to the band, really own the time and also connect with the space between the notes. So the space between the notes, that's everything. I think it was Mozart, one of my, one of my hugest influence, Wolfgang Mozart. I think he said, music is the space between the notes. So it's just beautiful when you can start to hear it and also feel it. So the LTR drumming method, we say how you move is how you groove. So I can remember he would say like, 
you know, think of the stick as like a paintbrush. Think of it, think of yourself as like a dancer. How are you moving your body between these strokes? So let me demonstrate this for you right now. So I've got a really slow bass line here. Two triplet, 40 BPM, four triplet, one triplet, two So first you gotta be able to count those triplets. Four. Notice no feet. And now I could sing it. Ding. So once you can really be aware of those triplets, and you notice I'm thinking like, what is my stick doing in the air between those strokes? Is it going over here? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna find. Now I'm gonna sing it. Ding, 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 ding. Am I behind the beat? Am I ahead of it? Ding, ding. And after a while, you just end up having a lot more authority over the time, a lot more comfort. Ding. And after a while, it starts to feel really good. It starts to feel meditative. Now I'll do the jazz ride. I'll add the feet. Left hand two. brings me back that's actually I'm getting that feeling you just eventually start to sink down and you're working on the good stuff you're working on your authority of time you're working on your breathing you're working on your command of the pulse you're working on listening and ironically when you play faster it's it affects you playing fast too so that's what's so cool about it when you just start to do your normal kind of Kind of drumming, it's like, wow, like I feel stronger. I feel like just clearer and I feel like a better version of myself. And he, he got me to do this 10 minutes every day. Just imagine how slow that would be. And just first he said, ride by itself and then add the feet 10 minutes a day for these different patterns. So if you'd like me to show you this and, and share what I've learned, connect with me on chrislesso.com got some free content on this and it's and his lessons were a part of you know I put it in the LTR drumming method because I saw what it did to me and I just wanted to take some of these lessons and share them with drummers and it's and it's uh, it's so impactful so so enjoy this interview from Joe Yanuzzi on Jim Blackley's teachings and his impact and his lessons and let it impact you to become your best self through drumming and beyond. Like I remember my first lesson with Jim, and, and like it was a little scary. Even. No, no, not at all. It was a, it was a Saturday morning, and it was June fifteenth, nineteen ninety six. It was a beautiful sunny Saturday morning. Yeah. A quarter to nine in the morning, I'm walking up the driveway yeah. up to sixty hills of Avenue. And Jim's in the window with his arms folded. And wow. Then, and then he motions to me, go to the side door. So then I go to the side door, and Jim opens the door, and, and, and we greet each other. Then, then I go into the studio in the basement, and um, Jim says, would you like a cup of tea? Yeah. And I said, yeah, yes, please. And then he goes up and puts the kettle on. He's like, milk and sugar? He goes, yeah, that, that'll be fine. So he comes downstairs, you know, the, the, tea's, the tea's brewing, and he looks at me, he's just looking at me, and he says, yeah. You're a worrier. I can see it written all over your face. Wow. And I just met this guy. Like, just mere minutes of meeting Jim, he's already telling me things about myself. <laughs> and then You're I knew. And I was blown away. I'm like, yeah, I'm in the hands of something special right now. This yeah. guy's heavy. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. You're a worrier. <laughs> yeah. um, 
Yeah, October for okay. October first, oh two. So October first, two thousand and two. This is some This is Jim Blackley's full name. Cool man. And of course, did did you have the thing where you you had to type them on a computer? Uh, no, no. I have my last notes are all handwritten. Some guys would, yeah. He handwritten. made me. He's like, he, yeah. he's like, you handwrite it now, and then you type it with later. This pencil, like, like this yeah, is him yeah. dictating yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Basic time exercise one to eleven. Yeah. And and so the notes, like this was the yeah okay lesson one. Basic exercise, please for five minutes. Oh, so it's a little quarter note forty. Mention them every other day. Yeah, to work on the internal clock as yep. well. Away from the from Play right hand only. Yeah, then add feet the first three. Then add feet basic time. Yeah, so we had you. Let's record this actually. Yeah, we are. Yeah, oh, we are. okay. Yeah, we are, reco we are recording this. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so play. So I, you know, I remember all this stuff vividly. I tell my students mm. about this. Play each each ride symbol for five minutes. Yeah, so each basic time. And I remember he exercise. even told me 10 minutes. Yeah, in, in some cases, yeah. In some cases, yeah. In some yeah. cases, if you have to go longer. That's like, dang, dang, yeah. Yeah, dang. That's a 40 BPM. Yeah. So yeah. right hand only. I remember the metronome every other day. Uh, right hand only for first week. Then add basic feet time when ready. Yeah, when ready. Exactly. <clears throat> and this is after like a once, a, once every four weeks would, would be the two hour yeah, lesson. Yeah, that's right. And remember to tap heel of high on, on quarter notes. Yeah. Let's get two and four. So totally going back to ground Absolute, zero and basic. Man. Play close, close touch of stone weak pulses. Be sure to hold stick close to symbol after each quarter note. Do yeah. not release unless there's a skip beat there. So that's the yeah. whole. Yeah. Uh, roll the money. Yeah, roll the money. And, and, and release. You know, you you go there and then release it. So, and so yeah. So so Chris, can you um, when you when you had the first lesson with Jim, uh, Jim had you play for him. You played for him, obviously, right? You, yeah, you you played some for like to like an along with thirty seconds. Yeah, for like an April Soul track, like a slow blues or something. He just said play. Yeah, oh, play some, I think he said play some jazz. Play some time. So yeah, yeah. play some jazz yeah. time. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So I just played. Okay. And he goes, okay, stop. And he goes, okay, I know right what you need. I remember he said, I know right what you need, and I know right where to take you. Yeah. yeah. And if I could touch you with a magic wand, I would. Right. But it's a slow process yes, and you yes. have to trust me yeah. to take you there yes and i remember even the next year joe i was gonna i was gonna do cosa again for the fifth oh, year in oh, a row okay. cosa as you know is this thing where you go for a week in in immersion yes. So you're in the yes. states you're yeah. in new york and it's a week of like 7 a.m to like midnight every day <clears throat> of of uh sessions with you know horacio hernandez yes. to greg bissonette to jim chapman yeah. to don familiar to the best in the world. Who organizes that? The, the guy Aldo, from Montreal. Aldo Mazza. Uh, Aldo, Ma Aldo Mazza, yeah. Mazda. Mazza, Mazza. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Aldo Mazza, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aldo. Mazza. I think I'm probably pronouncing it a bit yeah. wrong, but. That's uh, cool. Yeah, and, and, I d and Will Calhoun and, mm -hmm. and uh, Giovanni Hidalgo yeah. and Peter Erskine and uh, Steve Smith, right? Like, this is a almost, game changer. Almost when you're, a great drummer. Yeah, that, that, that was really the blueprint. But, and again, I was like 19 to 23. Mm -hmm. Those were Between my years. Between the Cosa years. Between the Cosa years, yeah. yeah. I was going to go again. And he said, don't go. Yeah, hold that thought. <laughs> he said, don't go this year. Like, I was kind of excited. I'm like, wow, Jim, in a few months mm -hmm. of Cosa, I'm going to go again. I'm the fifth year in a row, and so-and-so is going to be there, and blah, blah, blah. And, and isn't that cool? And he's like, don't go to that. I don't like very stern in a stern you know way right he's like that's the wrong move he's like go if you want but i'm telling you it's the wrong move he says focus focus on what i'm giving you mm -hmm. right <laughs> and because drummers have this insatiable urge to right. <laughs> absorb everything yeah, yeah. and that gets you nowhere because you get a millimeter you know uh towards your goal but, but it's like a thousand goals mm -hmm. so you get only a millimeter instead of going you know one way Towards yeah. just one thing. That's right. That's Focus right. on less. Yeah, exactly. And, and that was Jim's big thing. It's just like, when I started studying with him, I put all the other stuff away and said, okay, this guy's a method. I want to learn the method. Yeah. And and because uh, he's done a lot of great drummers. Proof's in the pudding. I'm going to invest in this. You have to trust the and, process. And you have to trust it. Trust you the process. You have to process. trust it. And, and I totally did. And any great, exactly. And any great teacher, mm -hmm. Joe, is yeah. going to be about what do you take away? Exactly. Not what do you add. Yeah. Yeah. Any teacher that, you know, you go, oh, let's play a song or check out this yeah, DVD, yeah. blah, blah, blah. That's like a short, you know, 
it's like sugared cereal or yeah. something. It's like it's good for a second, but it's no real nourishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and what do you call that sugar? Sugared cereal. It's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's just good for a yeah, second. Kind of chocula, yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> you're, you're, it's good for that moment, and then and then you just and then it's, yeah. it's you know no sustenance from it, right? Yeah. And and the guys like Peter Erskine, like you know the story when Neil Peart went to Peter Erskine for lessons. Yeah. He's almost sixty. Yeah, this was this was yeah. like two thousand twelve, I think. And Peter had him play the the jazz. The basic jazz rides on, on a high yeah, only yeah, yeah. story for like six months That's or something right, to get that together. Yeah, yeah, just that and yeah. and see, so it's like taking away things. And check out these notes. This is this is me in the car trying to write down okay. everything. So he told this Elvin Jones story. Mm -hmm. I'll just okay. read my notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, read your notes. Uh, Elvin's story about how how before Elvin's band played, he butted his forehead into the forehead of the other player. Okay, so what, what he what he said was, Elvin had such high standards of his band. It was like the mm -hmm. Elvin Jones yeah. band, and uh, and it was his name on it. So so he felt I think it was a saxophone player felt that he was kind of coasting, and he wasn't really yeah. giving a hundred percent. So he said on the way to the stage, he 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 butted his head he head butted this guy, wow. Elvin. Yeah, yeah. Rammed his head and said, whoa, yeah, yeah. what'd you do that for? And he yeah. said. That's the feeling of a of a of a Mack truck hitting you when you leave the gig tonight. He said, So imagine imagine this was the last gig you ever played on yes. earth and you walked out that back door and you got slammed by yeah. a truck. Yeah. And he said, That's that's he did it to jar him. Yeah. Yes. And he said, uh, I want you to play this gig like it's the last gig you yes. you'll ever play on this earth. Yeah. And Jim told me that story. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was his standard, yeah. basically. And that was, that was the first lesson. And so I wrote, uh, you play this gig and afterwards you walk out the back door onto the street and get hit by a truck. This is, the, this is your last night to play on this earth. That is how I want you to play tonight, last chance. Yeah. Focus, on, focus on this. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and he said, look at that. He said, not bad for a white cat from Barry. <laughs> That's what I already say about my play. And he spoke of Freddie Groove, he said it was rubbish. Oh, That's funny, eh? Okay. I think I I guess I'd mentioned Freddie Gruber. Yeah. Listen to Jake Hanna from Woody Herman's yes. band. Yes. Uh, mean Jake. every note you play. Don't waste one note. Wow. That's wow. heavy, eh? Wow. And then I had some questions yeah. for Jim to ask him about. about it's amazing. Stuff. It's amazing how, yeah, because the lessons are very thought provoking, and and, and and you're you're a thought provoking individual. You like to probe, and then, you know, you're seeking knowledge. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that's why we all. Uh, yeah. We all, you know, went so, to so. Um, I mean, after after that initial lesson, I mean, you must have just had your mind blown. Yeah. And and uh, and is this the whole? Idea? Were you practicing at forty before studying with Jim, or was this totally new to you? The whole idea of slowing it down, putting everything under a microscope, and and getting into the mechanics. Because I know the mechanics of the ride symbol for me were it was very unique. I had some inkling of it, of a wind up and a point down. But not to that detail. Yeah, no, yeah. it was... Uh, yeah, elaborate on that for you. That was a first with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dom had... Uh, we'd done some stuff with the free stroke. Yeah. And very slow, exact yeah. strokes, but yeah. nothing like... Uh, and, and Dom, he had this line where he said, like, the slower you go, the faster you learn. Yeah, The absolutely. slower you go. So it was kind of like these little seeds being planted. And then Jim took it to a whole other yeah, level. It's yeah. like, oh... Uh, but no, the going forty thing was yeah. was. Uh, I think so many because I was already a professional player at that point because yeah, yeah. I, I had a full roster of gigs and stuff, and going to him, you almost feel like you can't play anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> like when you I'm playing yeah. regular, and then all of a sudden it's like dang, <laughs> you know, and then you go pay your parking meter, and then you do another stroke, dang, and then you go like, you know, make a sandwich, and like there's so much space between the strokes, yeah, and going yeah, at forty yeah. BPM, yeah. so you. Uh, yeah, I felt like I was completely starting to completely dis he takes you apart and puts you back together yeah, and like absolutely. you're completely disarmed, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that was kind of that was kind of new. <laughs> so when you and, and, and even the whole idea of of shaping the line that you play through the use of strong and weak pulses. Yeah. I mean that must have been a new thing as well. I mean it has it has some sort of some sort of kinship with grace notes and accents. It has some connection with that. Yeah, but um, I think I got what he was saying because um, 
any higher study of an instrument is going to be where you start to draw the sound out of the instrument instead of drive into it. Mm -hmm. And that's like, think of cello yeah. or, vi you know, violin or piano or Ke yeah. Keith Richards playing the guitar. Yeah, right. He's right? Like, yeah. yeah, you're pulling the sound <laughs> yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. instrument. So I knew about, that was, I know it's interviews about Jim, but Dom kind of introduced oh. me you know, via all his teachers yeah, to the yeah. concept, you know, Joe Morello yeah. to the concept of the free stroke, yeah. which is obviously rebound and, 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 uh, pull outs, you know, pulling yeah. the sound where you become, yeah. yeah so I was just starting to kind of get, the upstroke upstroke pull -out. yeah, so really Joe Morello and Jim Chapin. Yeah, because, because Dom calls the, um, the upstroke a pull out as well. Yeah. He has a, a, a um, interchangeable terminology. Like exactly. He, he calls, um, a downstroke, a control stroke. Control stroke, yeah. And he calls an upstroke a pull out. Pull which out. makes sense because look at pull the. Out. Yeah, you're pulling out. You're exactly. Totally, you're totally doing that. So yeah. that, I think Jim just kind of, you know, like, like, um, expanded on those concepts. So I got, okay, I get how the. It, it's like effortless mastery. Mm hmm. Yeah, can you right? Like you're that? trying to, yeah, you're trying to, you, you're trying to create a big result with very little energy. Mm -hmm. And work with nature, not against. So I was starting to already think along those lines yeah. from some of my past teachers. So Jim just, that was his take on it. Yeah. You know, like roll the, uh, roll the money. Was, yeah. Okay, I get that I'm letting the stick go. For the and skippy. Yeah, yeah, and there's a bit of rebound. Yeah. And then I'm pulling it, and I'm, I'm pulling it back. And, and I'm winding up for the next Yeah, thing. and I was already yeah. learning about, like Steve Smith had talked about studying with Freddie Gruber. Yeah. So us studying with Jim yeah. is, is, well, is very parallel oh, to that. Yeah, you know, like, uh, look at how... It, Freddie Gruber transformed those guys. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Gruber, Gruber, Dave Wackel. Gruber definitely had a method. He did. We'll talk a little. Yeah. We'll talk about Gruber a little, little bit later on. Okay. Because I want to talk. I want to talk to you about Gruber. I think he's mm -hmm. inter he's an interesting cat. Anyway, yeah. Let's go. So, um, um, so when just when you were practicing this stuff at forty and 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 whatnot, what what were some of the things that were you were feeling and experiencing? Um, mm. Were, were some of the results in some way immediate? Were, were you experiencing change with, with, your, with your inner clock and stuff like that? Was your time getting better? Yeah, I, I built um, awareness and, and confidence mm -hmm. and, and, and development of space. That was a lot of... And also knowing that... Knowing that... I was on that path was was very empowering yeah like that's it's hard to describe but I, I would play a gig and I'd get glimpses of a deeper world mm -hmm. and it, and I would know that there's so much more yeah, yeah it's interesting. and sometimes guys look for lessons because like, oh, I'm stuck in a rut or I, mm -hmm. I can't you know it's like you, you can only see so far ahead of you yeah but then any great teacher will just show you uh kind of a bigger world absolutely yeah. and show you what you don't know I guess and, yeah. and so I that was like it was just so exciting and empowering right yeah. to, to just play and go wow like I didn't see <laughs> I didn't see that before yeah. right and, and that's the whole thing with the 40 yeah BPM just like right hand you know RH only right yeah, hand only. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden Joe like I saw he had you play off the left shoulder yeah, yeah. Okay. same thing yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I heard, it was just like a deep ocean all of a sudden. Like I heard colors in the symbol I didn't hear before. Wow. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and just the, the way the, the way the decay was, yeah. you know, like when you hit it, yeah. symbol just with one stroke, yeah. there's a whole world in there. Yeah. And I didn't, <laughs> and I didn't, like I took it for granted. Yeah. It's like, okay. I know what a ride symbol sounds like. Got it. Next. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's almost like like Picasso yeah. when he did the blue period. Yeah. Like okay, blue. I got it. I know what it is. I know how to use it. But but he went deep into that one color for three years, man. Mm -hmm. He was only doing the blue, only only working with blue for three years, Picasso, right? So that reminded me of what Jim did with the ride. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like only use your right hand on the ride. Yeah. And go at forty, and and all of a sudden it's like wow, it's like a 
you know, once I was blind and then I could see. <laughs> it was a little yeah. bit like that. Yeah, so what Terry was telling me when I interviewed Terry, it was just like, yeah, you have to be able to dr- drive the band just with the right right hand on the symbol. Yeah. And he's right, you know. And uh, what I do sometimes is I'll, I'll, I'll just... I'll just play time on the ride. Yeah. And I listen and say, I want to see how well I can yeah. really just hold this together without having any temptation to call Core notes. Just, I can throw in some skip beats too or some tied notes, but, uh, you know, tight note accents. But yet, I don't want to play anything with the snare and bass or the high hat. Exactly. I just want to drive it all with the ride some more. And exactly. See how well I hold it together. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> like Dizzy Gillespie had this saying, he said, I think I, I'm going to, I'm like, I'm like paraphrasing, but he said something like, leave some holes, mm-hmm. you never know, some music might fall fall in there. Yeah, something like, like, so it's like, when you leave these spaces, yeah. and these, uh, sickle, 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 and these gaps, up. like, like what you just said, oh, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna just use the right, and no left hand, and, and all of a sudden, what happens is more musical, and, and, uh, oh, so here, so here, this is, this will be a good thing. This is lesson two, yeah. Yeah, so Jim, in lesson two, I noticed that, you so you're working on the basic time studies, then you're working pages 58 59 out of the essence, right? 62, 63, and then... And this is him d- dictating yeah, to me. Yeah, he taught you the sweet, he taught you the sweet motion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it says here, jazz, jazz ride with up, down, motion, five minutes, 40 BPM count. Cut up after skip beat on one and three. Go down on two and four. Hold stay close to some more after two and four. Drop skip beat from low level. And snap stick into palm of the hand with fingers on one and three. Sweep to left on one and three. Point to the right on two and four. And drop skip beat. Was he getting you to do the backhanded thing? Was he getting you? No. Was he, was he getting you to do it like this, say? Because uh, I remember when he taught it to me. Wow. I know, I know he I know he had this I, I know he had this as well. It was more the roll of money. Yeah, yeah. And it was come to the left shoulder. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember any Yeah, that And he that. did say it wasn't a, it wasn't a twist. I yeah, remember yeah. I remember he said it's not a it's not a twist. That's that, yeah, that's interesting because Jim um that's one of the beautiful things about Jim is that he personalizes his instruction. Because he because exactly. he, because he, 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 he deals with you as an individual. Exactly. That's what we're yeah. discovering here. Exa- right? Exactly, exactly. This is wonderful. Yeah. And this is some notes. These are my notes. Dropping logs analogy. Oh. Why well, for I haven't looked at these for ages. So using right hand on snare. Oh, when you when you're filling out with the extension, right? Is that yeah. what you're referring to that? Natural motion, drop dropping logs. Yes. I don't even remember what that means. I'm, I'm I guess yeah, I remember him I remember him. Oh yeah, yeah, right. I remember, yeah. I remember him saying that. It's like just dropping. I remember him using that analogy. He's just trying to plant a seed in your mind. Yes. Right. Like I remember he said, "Shake." Uh, this is one thing. Remember we were talking about the his the molar stroke. Mm-hmm. He said, "Imagine like you're shaking water off your hands." Did yes. you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Just like any, you know, right? And uh, I remember him. I remember him using the log the log analogy. Really? Eh? Yeah. Like I hadn't yeah. thought of it until yeah. wow. until just now. Let your weight drop on the seat. Don't hold your shoulders up or arms yes. intense. Position relaxed intensity. Yeah, no, I remember I've, that. Yeah, amazing, eh? And he and he would. Con- this is only lesson two, so he would say yeah. that many, many times. Uh, Jim practices everything he does at a slow tempo, like Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. At first, I think I probably asked him, "Do you practice this way?" <laughs> um, you must feel. Th- oh, you must feel things from the yes. bottom up, not the other way around. Think of the left foot as the metronome. Yes. Always know where you are. Remember, you stressed that. Always know yeah, where you the are form. in the piece, yeah. in the form exactly. Get your nose out of the book <laughs> once you know what yeah, is going yeah. on. 10 hours a day is enough, jokingly, yeah, be patient. So he kind of meant, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah I remember him saying just, just 10 you know, hours a day, 10 hours a day. He, he said an hour of focused practice a day is enough. I remember, yes. remember yeah. he told me that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Um, cool. Can you, uh, what did I want to ask you? Let's see. Now, when you, um, When you got into, say, for instance, the um, playing the three beat figures over four four, yeah, the, the section G, the two bar melodic motifs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can can you can you elaborate on you you got that far right with Jim right? You got into those in his in in, in the, the uh, 
Yeah, the yeah. essence book. Yeah. You, got, you got into the three beats. I pretty much did yeah. the whole. Yeah. Like, okay. So more did, or less did the whole you um, when you started working on that stuff, playing over the bar line, uh, was that relatively new for you at that time? Well, I was aware of polyrhythms and African rhythms yeah, and stuff, yeah, but okay, and I thought it was okay. just really cool that he was he he thought like that in layers, like yeah. it just. It wasn't so, okay, this is, you know, turn to page 16 and mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, read with, read this rhythm on the page. This was awareness of, excuse me, it's almost like <clears throat> the movie Inception and it's like, you know, dream within a dream. Like those, right, uh, right. being aware of, 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 you know, like those multi layers. Like, you're, so you're playing the, th like, I think we were... Yeah, we were playing the three four over the four four bass line, yeah, yeah. and he had you sing the figures and stuff, so we knew where you were. So it was. I just thought that was so cool that he. Can, can you elaborate yeah. on the singing? How, how did that? How did that affect your? your wow, that's memory? that's good. You brought that up. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, that was that was also a game changer. Okay. <clears throat> it's it, it's it, this is the fifth limb, and I'm mm -hmm. pointing to my voice, yeah, like the, yeah. the the throat. Your voice is the fifth limb. And how you, you know, if you can't say it, you can't play it. Mm -hmm. And how you sing it is going to determine how you, how it comes out of your instrument. And so all the singing was like, ding, 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 ding. So you can hear how I'm singing that. Like, I'm committed, but I'm not yelling it. Mm -hmm. I'm not rushed. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I'm not like, dang, oh yeah, I'm just getting it over with. <laughs> it's not like that. So making that attachment from the voice to the yeah. to the hand to the instrument and to the sound yeah that was huge joe yeah, like yeah. before it was just like okay i'm gonna try to execute and then you know we don't really i just had never really done that before um it really gets you to focus in and listen yeah to, to the tone that's being produced absolutely yeah. and the way and when you sing especially at the same time like ding yes. you know when you play at the same time ding Ding, da, ding. So you're linking. Yes. Wow, that that was a game, and it's also meditative because if I'm just playing, okay, I gotta call Joe back about that thing. <laughs> I'm gonna make a cucumber sandwich for lunch. Right? Your mind can kind of wander, That's but if right. I'm like ding, ding, uh, mm -hmm. ding, ding, and for like five to ten minutes, Joe, this is what he's saying, yes, right? Yeah. Ding, ding, uh, ding. That's commitment. And I remember he told me about this this story about seeing Max Roach in Toronto. Do you know about the yeah, Rib yeah. where the Ribley is? Or it was, like it was the, I think the Colonial Tavern. Okay. I think yeah, because I, I Queen's I, Queen's I, Yeah, I did some research on that. It was, it was uh, I'll have to look it up. I believe it was the Colonial. Uh, Jim says it was nineteen fifty three, but my research tells me it was nineteen fifty five. He told me fifty five. I thought. Yeah, because because yeah, then then yeah, he probably. I mean, he's probably gotten his years mixed up. I mean. Well, wait till we're eighty. You know. Yeah, I know. We're nine hundred years old. That's years. why it's good that we're documenting <laughs> this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he said what got. And this was the first lesson I think we yeah, talked about yeah. this. And and he he said what that he said that was his game changing moment. Right, right. And he said it was, he said it was his commitment. He said, I've never seen commitment like that in my life. He was like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. from uh, when seeing Max Roach. He mm -hmm. said, I, I, I think he offered to buy him a beer or something, and then they hung out, and that was the first uh, wow. time that they met. But he said he'd never seen commitment like that. And he demands that of his students. And, uh, uh, and that's what I like about him, too. I wanted to get this on tape today. Mm -hmm. is that, like he, A good teacher will not try to be your friend. Like... It's like, you know, if I need another friend, I'll, I'll get a dog. You know what I mean? I appreciate that we're... Yeah. And I, I, I remember he did say at one point, like, I am, like, I am your friend. I remember exactly. like, like yeah. your, your friend yeah. Jim or something. Yeah. Like, he'd sign his emails and he did say, consider me your friend. But he would say what needed to be said to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, like, <laughs> I got divorced when I was, um, oh, wow. when I was having lessons with him oh, during that process. And I remember he, he's just, like... He just look right through you and he'd say what needs to be said, mm -hmm. you know. And we're taking dicta you know, mm -hmm. taking the notes in the lesson. He's like, I think he just said it. Like you've you've let this go on long enough. You have to face what you need to face. Because I was kind of yeah. escaping into yeah. music and drumming yeah. and practicing yeah. and not dealing with some personal challenges yeah. at that yeah. time, wow. you know. And he said, you've let this go on. I remember it was just like. It's just like just like did, throwing did he, cold water on you, you know. Did he know you were going through a divorce? I think he, I think he, 
Uh, yeah, he wasn't like a psychic or anything, no, but I, no, I think no. I think he. You told him he knew something. Yeah. yeah Either yeah. he could tell by yeah. my demeanor, or oh, he he has that way. Of yeah, he just kind of. He can study your your facial expressions, motion. Yeah. And he knows where you're at. Yeah, he kind of knew a bit of where yeah. what, you know, like I was, a bit where I was at in my in yeah. my life, but, uh, uh, I think that was before I got divorced actually, mm. so, he's good. You know, there's a lot of gym stories like that. Like he'll yeah. just say what oh, needs yeah. to be said, mm -hmm. and about your plan. Like yeah. this is where you you're you know weak, yeah. and this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, and, and I mean, you know, that's supreme confidence mm -hmm. to have a to, to a teacher. To, to make you play at 40 and not try to <laughs> oh I better make sure this guy has fun so he comes back yeah, and I, I want know. him to like me exactly he didn't give a shit no, if, he, I know. if you liked him or not <laughs> I know and that's why like look at you know his Facebook page and the things people write I know back in 72 yeah. blah 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 that was my game change like he's had more game changing moments I know. for people He's including helped, me. He's helped out a lot of guys, man. Beyond help, like we're talking, yeah. like shifting. Yeah, you know? he, it, it, it's it's um, it's interesting because a, a student of mine named um, Jeff Campbell went to Humber for a year. He did the the foundations year, and he was Jeff was studying with me, and I was putting him through Jim's method and all that stuff. And um, uh, Jeff was in one of his classes, and I can't remember who the professor, or the teacher was, but uh, he just basically mentioned that, oh, I'm studying. With, with Joey Inuzzi, who was a student of Jim Blackley. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this particular teacher said, oh, Jim Blackley, I mean, people go to him to have their lives changed. Wow. This, this is what he said. This is Incredible. What this, I, don't know, I don't know who the teacher was, but this is what this teacher said to my, to there my you student. Go. People go to see Jim to have their lives changed. Wow. <laughs> that's powerful, man. That's very powerful. Yeah, yeah. And that's beyond learning a few books yeah, and yeah. stuff. And, and I remember... Uh, I think it was my first lesson, Joe. Like someone, mm -hmm. the guy after me, the student, mm -hmm. you know, I was walking out, the next student's coming in. Yeah. And he was from London, man. Oh, he was from the UK. Yeah. He had come, yeah. he had come, he had flown in to see, yes. like literally yeah. flown in to see, yeah. to come. So that's, yeah, when people are going to another continent yeah. <laughs> to study with you, yeah. it's not just to learn uh, exactly a couple of licks. That's right. So, yeah. That's that was that was one thing that I really got yeah. from the lessons too. That he would just, yeah. it, it's almost like Karate Kid type mm. stuff. If you know that story, yeah. that, like yeah. just he, he's not trying to be light. He he knows, like it's just the ultimate supreme confidence of a teacher, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, to to um, do to do that. Now, the let's talk a little. Okay, that's great. Let's talk a little bit about um, the role book. Did you work on Sacred Rolls with Jim? Not too much. Okay. Like I kind of got the concept of okay. it. Okay. Steal. Okay. Here's something I say to my the students all the time: okay. steal the accents, throw the rest away. Yeah. You ever yeah, said that? Yeah. Too? Jim would say that. Yeah. 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 That stick, was stick of saving the accents and throwing the unaccented notes away. Yeah. Because because the musical line is what's important. Exactly. Yeah. And that yeah. that was also yeah. kind of a game changer. Like, mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of an attitude like you don't really care, you know, about the middle that, notes. That was one of the radical things about Jim was the the whole concept of taking a musical line. And and uh, interpreting it in different ways, you know. Yeah. And and uh, I didn't go into it that that much. Is this your student class? Yeah, it's okay. We can keep going. Yeah. So um, the uh, how how did that how did that affect you? I mean, just the whole idea I mean, of you, syncopated roles. Were you aware of that concept of taking of taking a, a written figure and interpreting it in different ways? Because you know you know Jim. We'll get you to, to apply the shuffle extension or the triplet extension to the time studies of the three beat figures or the two bar melodic motifs. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, even the role book. There's so many different ways of interpreting those figures. Yeah. For me, Joe, it was yeah. like a, it was like a musical way of doing rudiments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like he he would say, you know, by default you're playing a five stroke roll. Mm -hmm. But you're not thinking of it. Yeah, I remember him saying that. Yeah. It's like by default, if you do this line, such and such, such and like even clave, da da yeah. da da. But if you put rolls between them, mm -hmm. that's an interpretation of the figure. Exactly. So the first one, that's yeah. a five stroke roll. Yeah. But you're just thinking of the musical line. Mm -hmm. Da 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 da. So now, how did that affect you when you were when you were playing when you were playing jazz and whatnot? 
Well, again, it, that type it, of thinking. We were talking about the singing. Yeah, yeah. And the and the and he was also make sure you had your reading together. Mm -hmm, but yeah. the singing equals when you 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 cannot sing unless you're committed to it. Mm -hmm. They you just yeah. can't do. Yeah. You won't last more than two minutes. You know what I mean? You'll you'll be like, oh, this isn't for me. If you're gonna sing and go through his, yeah, his method, yeah. you were he demanded like a commitment from you. It's also the tablet thing. Yeah, and oh, that's yeah. where I saw that. Yeah. That's where I saw that too. Where you're yeah. singing, you know, you 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 start by singing da 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 What's that? You're singing so country there? I'm just singing a kaida. Uh, a kaida? Yeah. And, and this That's is this, this, is, North, Indian this is North Indian. Yeah, North Indian kaida. And then they'll, obviously those all have strokes with them. But it's a musical line. I'm not okay. thinking of it as yeah. um, uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one, two, three, four, you know, like blocks and, mm -hmm. and five stroke rolls and stuff like that. Like it's, okay. it's, uh, it's, you know, he was all but the musical line. And, so and Chris, how did... Um, let me also look. playing jazz. He, yeah. He had told me, he, he said, go memorize as many jazz heads as you yes. can. Did you get that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, yeah. That was, That's the first. That was a game changer, lesson. too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I went home and, and I was like, wow. And I memorized important. all the monk heads and, uh, and uh, Thelonious Monk and uh, uh, Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. And that was like a shift, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, how did, um, maybe we touched on this a little bit, but how, how did Jim's teachings influence like your own, your own pedagogy? In your own pedagogy. In the way I talk, in the way I teach. Yes, exactly. Yeah, can you talk about that? Well, in a huge way. Okay. I think. Well, the singing, in so many ways. I mean, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, it's just, it's like on well, on. one. He he had said this thing once. He's like, I'm gonna when I'm through with you, you're gonna think, you're gonna think that you always knew this stuff. Yes. Did you get that too? Like yeah. you'll know it so deeply. Yes, absolutely. That you'll think you're you always knew it. Yes. It's kind of like right, you, like riding a bike. You yes. you think. Yeah. Oh yeah, I always knew how to do that. Yeah, and you can't yeah. remember. Like, do you remember a time when you couldn't tie your shoelace? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. If you really think, but but you just think, oh yeah, I always knew how to do that. Yeah, when you learned, when you learned, you learned it, and it was there for life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you don't even think about it anymore. He told me. Yeah, yeah. So the way Jim, that that's um, a lot of his his stuff like. Um, like what I said about the, the commitment, awareness of space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the slower you go, the faster you learn, mm -hmm. uh, not, what, not needing your students to like you, not try, you know what I mean? Just saying, saying, yeah, saying what yeah. you, saying yeah. what needs to be said. Yeah, exactly. And showing, showing tough love. Tough love. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saying what needs to be said. Yeah. And, and not being, not being scared to offend somebody, you know, and, yeah. and his thing was, um, yeah, he, he just, he, he was connected to the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. A lot of those, you know, the New York players yeah, and that, boy, the yeah. attitude. Yeah. I remember he told a story about this, this little, it's probably in my notes somewhere, but this little, uh, this little Jamaican kid, I, I don't even remember the full story, mm -hmm. but he saw this little kid, I don't know if this was in New York or something, this little 12 year old or something. Mm -hmm. And I think he saw Jim play or something and goes, Oh man, you, you ain't shit. That's that ain't so impressive or something like that. And Jim said like he liked that fire and that attitude. He's yes, like, yes. like there was something in there that he said you yeah. take a bit of that mm -hmm. in your. It, it's like I, I almost I I joke with my students say like like you know Kanye West. Yeah. Like you gotta have a bit of Kanye. Right. Or like maybe ten percent. Don't go all that way. Yes, like yes. it's com it, what it is is complete and utter confidence, mm -hmm. and it's almost a brashness. Yes, yes. Like it's borderline. Yeah. It's not polite and. Keith it, Moon it's, had that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and Max, we're yeah, talking about the Max yeah, Rose thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where you take charge and yeah. it's like you're not fucking around and this mm -hmm. is, he really, that he really instilled that in me. Okay. And. and uh, uh, you know, like like you said, driving the band mm -hmm. with just your just right your hand right is, hand. Yeah, exactly. And the singing really, really does that. Here's another quick gym story. I did this uh, gig at the Mississauga Art Center, and there was uh, 
uh, it was an award show, and there was an there was one act that the girl wanted to come out and and use my high my like to sit at my set mm -hmm. and to use the feet mm -hmm. like the bass drum and the high, yeah. but she was gonna play like Jean Bay or something, oh, wow. right? Okay. So she so I'm side. Uh, she said, "Can I use your drums just for this one thing?" I'm like, "Sure, of course." And so I go to the side stage and I'm watching her, and she, uh, I could see her feet, and her left foot was going rock. Yeah, exactly. Right? Dropping and I'm watching her, I'm looking at her yeah. left foot, and I'm like, I'll bet she's a gym black. Exactly. Yeah. Because he, he said, like, commit to your, like, your left foot. Like, yes. like you got to drive the band, yeah. right? Yeah. With that snap of the hi-hat. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, be, he said, don't be like a wet fish. Like so it just came back wow. to me. So don't be like a wet fish. Have a strong handshake, and and you should exude that in your drum. Yes, so yes. I looked at this. Uh, um, her names her names escape me right now, but I saw her play this Jonas, yeah. and then I asked her later. I'm like, yeah. did you study with Jim? Yes. And she said, yes, I did for five years. Wow. So imagine looking at someone's foot mm -hmm. for one. She only played like five minutes. Yes, exactly. And I know that she studied with Jim. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that cool? It's amazing. That's heavy. Oh, I, I saw, do you know John and Dames? You heard of him? No. He was from BC, studied with Jim in Toronto. I saw the guy sitting at a drum set at a gig. He didn't yeah. even play a note. I just saw him sitting at the kit, and he was playing with a bluegrass band. I was on the same bill. I was at the yeah. Beverly. And I went up to him afterwards. He goes, did you study with Jim Blackley? He goes, yeah, I did. So he had the same, he had the same know, experience. I, yeah, I said, I could tell just by the way you were holding the six. The way you're formed, the way you were playing the patterns. That's intense, isn't it? Yeah. Think it is. about that. Like And I've had people come up to me and say, You study did you study with Jim? I go, Yes. I've had it too. Yeah, they they can totally see it. Even before you play. I mean, yeah. And that's yeah. that's yeah. uh that's that's intense. Mm -hmm. And that's uh um, you know, like that thing Miles Davis said about how I, I can I can tell I can tell the guys I can tell how a guy's gonna play by the way he walks in the door. Mm -hmm. That's how Miles yeah. would at these yeah. jazz jam sessions or something. So the guy, the way a guy carries an instrument, the way a guy walks, the way he carries himself, mm -hmm. and he'd see guys walk in and, and he'd be like, nah, I ain't playing with that motherfucker. You know, like Miles <laughs> Davis, right? Yeah. Mother, motherfucker. And that, and he would, that's the same kind of idea. Mm -hmm. It's like Jim, Jim kind of got that and he, yeah. he, he uh, instilled that in, in yeah. his students. Yeah. What was Chris, what was the thing, uh, was it the first lesson where Jim was talking about the hi-hat on two and four? It was, it was in there. It was the first or second lesson. I just wanted that to. has to be the first. Yeah, because I remember it was, it was a back page here, I think. Let me see, because he sent it. Yeah, he just passed it. Uh, high in the two and the four. No, but Sound it, high in two and the four when ready. Yeah, but there was um right here, I think it was, uh, there was something, some, one of the lesson notes, I remember, we just, covered, we just saw it. He said something about the two and the four. And right there, maybe. It was, another, it was another point that he made. On the two and the four, let me see. It was this three. Uh, yeah, we didn't go to. We've only been on that first two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We did do the feet, and that was the, yeah. the whole feathering of the bass drum. Yeah, yeah. But he was big on the left foot. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That was also a game yeah. changer. Oh to yeah. Me. Okay. But thing, things of my students, like like. Uh, it, it's so much a part of my tapestry that I I haven't I. It's like now it's a part of who I am, mm -hmm. so I I haven't really. Uh, it's it's hard to, you know, unweave the tapestry once mm -hmm. it's that yeah. interwoven, right? But yeah. but I think I think it's an authenticity too, Joe. Right? Like he was in, he was such an authentic and caring, yeah. person. So I think, um, I and he took what he did so. Uh, so seriously, you know, oh, and if absolutely. you were like that, yeah. that doesn't even yeah. That doesn't even do it justice. Like I, I remember even, you know, if you're five minutes late, oh, yeah. that's a big that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And and I remember once I'm like, Oh, I don't have enough money, can I pay you next time? And he's like, Excuse me? Like yeah. would no. you walk into a store and exactly. walk out with merchandise exactly. and say, I'll pay I know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just, yeah. just that be and be just a you know, get your get yourself together. Mm -hmm. Like on all levels. Exactly. Get your shit together. Exactly. And exactly. uh yeah. deal with what you gotta deal yeah. with. And yeah. and he said some stuff like, you know, Get up in the morning and give yourself a good kick in the ass, and mm -hmm. and 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 we didn't even talk about his spiritual side too. Yeah, like that, yeah. that was profound too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the deeper, yeah. the deeper things like being, you know, honesty, yeah. 
and uh, and his and his concept of family and Aisha, yeah, and it all came through in every ride symbol stroke that he did. Wow. Like who he was as a person, mm. really came out in every note that he played, and I I kind of got that. That's when I was like, whoa, the type of person you are is the type of drummer you'll be. Yeah, he was big in the, into that. Joe, it basically Sorry. boils down to what you said about. Uh, you know, be. I want you to think like an artist and not a drummer. That's really kind of sums it up. Like I, I uh, because you're getting into like there's this concept that that uh, I call uh, the the four offenses of drummers. <laughs> the four offenses. The four offenses of oh, drummers, oh, right? Okay. And these are things. These are like complaint talk complaints of like other musicians against drummers, yes. basically, right? So it's it's listening. Yeah. Time mm -hmm. yeah. or lack of listening, right? Mm -hmm. Bad time, uh, no usage of space, yeah. and uh, dynamics. Yeah. Now think of Jim. Mm -hmm. All four of those things, like, addressed. oh yeah, big time, right? <laughs> yeah. Like listening. I mean, we talked about how he, he, he got me to memorize all the all the jazz. Yeah. He said memorize as many jazz heads as you can. The the melody of them. Yeah. Uh, use of space. I mean, the whole forty BPM thing. Yeah. Uh, dynamics. I mean, we're talking about touch and and yeah. responding to the music and uh, think like a dancer and all that stuff. And then uh, what was the last one? Time. Um, you know, when you go forty BPM, you're really opening up the tapestry of of, of subdivisions of what time is. Yeah. And uh, wow, that was that was a very profound thing too. He talked about the grid too. Did he talk about yeah, the grid? Yeah, the eighth note triplet grid or the sixteenth note. Yeah, grid. and that just name grid. I love. Yeah. I love. Or a sixteenth uh, note triplet grid. Whatever you're yeah. off of. It could be a quintuple grid. It could be, exactly. You know, and Joe Morello's table of time. Yeah, I think he, yeah. he he said to have that together and yeah. stuff. So yeah, yeah. 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 The grids. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, how about the spiritual side of things? Like, like I know that, okay, I know that in the past, when when um, when Blackley discovered Baal Mahayadin, the, the Sri Lankan uh, Sufi master, that was back in, I guess, 1977 or so, and that was like a, a life-changing moment for Jim, when he, when he met Baal. And at that, like, I, you, know, you know how passionate Jim is. I mean, when he, when he gets into something, he gets so, uh, you know, passionate about it, and, Yes, he goes into it full throttle. And yeah, it was just that was a life changing moment for him, and and he was he was turning a lot of his students on on the Balmai and then, and um, I mean some of the from what I heard and I don't in the in the thesis I don't really want to I want to go there but I want to just highlight the positive aspects of it. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying because there's it's, there's some interesting there's some interesting stories that I could tell you, hmm. like for instance. Um, Back when, just keep this between you and I, you know. Back when Barry Elms was studying with Jim, uh, it was a, it was around 1977 because Elms was with Jim from 76, 70, 1975 to 1977. Yeah. And Jim was just getting into the Baal Mahayadeen thing, and, and Jim told Barry like, you know, you got to meet this Baal Mahayadeen. It's 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 his life changing. I mean, this 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 guy's a spiritual master, and come with me to Philadelphia and meet him because mm -hmm. there, there was a there was a, a fellowship there. And Jim actually and Aisha would actually commute. They would go to this field fellowship in Philadelphia wow. to, uh, to to spend time with Bao and, and study with him and the other students. And um, actually, Aisha is is uh, she's buried in Philadelphia, in, in on the grounds of this fellowship. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. So, the thing is, is that what the way Barry put it, Jim just said to him, like, you know, if you. If you really want to make it as a musician, you got to come and meet Bawa. <laughs> That's kind of, and that wasn't Barry's bag at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was just kind of like, no, 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 I'm not into this. You know yeah. I mean? And that's fine. That's all fine. I think in later years, I think early on, Jim was not, he was kind of, not that he, I guess he was kind of, he was turning his students onto it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and maybe some people saw that as he was pushing something on them or, or Promoting the spiritual idea, the spiritual. That's a challenging thing. thing yeah. It is a challenge. Uh, what did Terry Clark call it? Uh, pro proselytizing or something like that. 
kind of like trying to get trying to convert someone into a specific way of thinking or hmm. or, uh, or or adopting a specific Did you try that on Terry? Uh, no, 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 no. Ter- Terry was um Terry Terry was obviously aware of all that stuff, but that wasn't uh, Terry was actually open to uh, spiritual philosophies anyway to begin yeah, with. Yeah. He was into those going down those avenues and checking those things out anyway. I guess it was from like I heard I heard some 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 people kind of react to it in a negative way. I I um, I think it's a wonderful thing. I I like it because um, Jim, in many ways, uh, was like was a spiritual figure in my life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. He 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 was he was my guru, my teacher, and yeah. I was learning about through him. I was discovering things about myself. Exactly. And, and the best teachers help to bring out the, the best qualities out of the student. Yeah. And to hold up the mirror. <laughs> yeah. And make you aware of who you are and the impurities and the good things as well. And but that's what learning's all about. It's like what you said to your student, you know. You know, you're gonna you're gonna leave now and you're gonna work on lesson, you're gonna make mistakes. Yeah, that's yeah, what you that, got it. But you that's what, that that's what it's all about. Totally got it, and that's yeah. a, that's a gem. Because it is about failing. The more you fail, it yeah, is, like, it like is about if you're in, say, a room full of drummers, yeah. let's say you're in a room full of 20 drummers, the best drummers in there are the ones that have failed the most. Yes, that's right. right. I totally they agree. put themselves forward. They've yes. tried to lead bands and it's failed. Yeah. They've tried studio sessions that have went wrong. And they've, <laughs> they've went to, you know, jam sessions and played a style that they weren't good for oh, yeah. and, and botched it at first. <laughs> Right, yeah. but you learn. We've it. all been there. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? So it's the still most success, to this day. Like those, there's the poster again. Those yeah. guys failed more than the average drummer. Yeah, that's right. Because they put themselves forward. It's true. It's and, true. Uh, and Jim said, like for every, uh, he said, I point the finger at, at you, but there's three fingers pointed back at me. I remember Jim said mm. said that to me. Wow. Uh, so he was always about look. Yeah, look, look in yourself. Yeah. That's what he's. That's what he said like that's all that's all you have to do you know all the answers are are inside you and uh i didn't he didn't uh well that was going to be my yeah we'll get to that in a sec chris that was going to be my next point is that i noticed in more recent years jim's kind of um backed off on that and in fact i asked him about behind bio behind because of the picture on because the, of the picture exactly and then he opened up and told me about it and he saw that i was I was open minded. Yeah. And he would talk about Bala, you know, and you know, I would listen. You know, he barely up. even yeah. I think he said who he was and he was a great teacher, but yeah. that I bear I I got like next to nothing. Mm-hmm. That was all you know. I didn't uh, mm. yeah, I, I never I don't know if he I don't know if he felt that he needed just to only talk like Okay, with the time with with Chris, we're gonna talk about these things, mm-hmm, and yeah. and but no, it was never really brought up that much. But I think I think that or, the, at all. I think the Sufism heavily influenced Jim, obviously, and and it yeah. plays a big role on how he teaches, and it's there in his teaching. I guess mm-hmm. the the compassion that he shows, yes, uh, the wisdom that he shares, the um, the, the the destruction of the ego. Yeah, and, totally. and, and 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 very much at the core of Sufism is, is matters of the heart mm. <laughs> and letting the heart resonate you know mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. the speaking and I think I think that's that was one of Jim's primary goals is to get us to tap through the mind to get us to tap into in, into the heart mm-hmm, and that mm-hmm. was the thing and I think it's there it's, it's that's what I want to ask him about I want to when I finally interview Jim I want to ask him about oh. about that angle so that's thing. the end of the project. Well, is interviewing Jim. Well, yeah, I mean he's the main character, right? <laughs> so I've got I've got questions for him, you know. Wow, awesome. Yeah, awesome. That, that, yeah. So, um, but apart from that, I mean, okay, apart from apart from the Sufism, the Bal Mahayadin thing, I always I always felt at ease being in a lesson with Jim, and I, and for me it was a very um, uh, sacred thing. It was a yeah, very, me too. Yeah, and it was it was very sacrosanct, and and it was um, it was spiritually uplifting. Did you feel the same way with many of your with many of your lessons? Yeah, I I, uh, I definitely left. You know, e- even the times when uh, 
like like that thing I said before about how he said you've you know you've let this go on too far and you have to mm, yeah. or you say something that you didn't want to really face. Yeah. You'd still feel uh like moved. Yeah. You know, and I sometimes yeah. I'd have to go for a walk and, me, me and just kinda yeah. Just kinda <laughs> think about it and digest it and yeah. take some notes and yeah. yeah I mean it, it uh I think every student has felt felt that. Oh, absolutely. And uh I mean, he definitely had a had a uh, presence like that. I think what you said is great. Like the the core of it, mm, yeah, it's like yeah. matters of the heart, yeah, and authenticity, yeah. and saying what needs to be said, and looking at yourself. And he, yeah. he he said a few times like it's about looking at yourself, and he said it in his words like knowing you're you're full of shit. <laughs> I remember he said that like look look at yourself and know that you're full of shit. That's right. And he also said that like you, you we come into this world pure and then you get polluted. Mm, yeah. Full full of yeah. shit, so to speak. Yeah. And he said your your life mission is to leave the earth the same way you came. It's mm. it's like it's a lifelong process to cleanse. to uh cleanse, yeah, yeah, I guess, right? And and uh wow. Yeah. Is, I never true. forgot when he yeah. he said that. That was uh that was pretty heavy. I remember Jim ben, I remember Jim saying to me once, this was this was deep. This blew my mind, he said to me. You have to understand the animal that you are. Wow. And that, and he said to me, he says, you're a combination of a long distance runner and a sprinter as a player. That's what he said to me. He's like, you've got that, you got the stamina and endurance of a long distance runner. Yeah. But then I've got those moments where I can, where I can sprint. Yeah, you know, I can I can let the singer strokes fly or whatever. And yeah, it's interesting. He described Elvin as a long distance runner, just having that superhuman yeah, energy. Yeah, you know, Elvin just could go. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, when Elvis would harness when Elvin would harness that thing, and he was zoning and focusing and yeah. playing with gold tree, and it was so intense. And he described Tony as a, as a sprinter. Mm. It's it, it's just interesting. It's just interesting the way that oh, I never uh, thought of it. Like that. Yeah. yeah, he didn't say that to me. Yeah, yeah, but that's that was interesting. That was really interesting. That stuck. One thing. One of the things that stuck with me. Yeah, I saw. I saw some. Um, one of the, some of the you know, and the Facebook page is interesting because yeah. that never was around even. Yeah, yeah. Until very recently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, and Kaja set it up. So you see, oh, everybody's comments and some. It's really interesting to see the comments. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like in 1972. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember some, somebody said something like, the things you said 10 years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just now, like they, you know, just now I'm starting to kind of get them. Exactly. So yeah. sometimes he'll say these things and oh, you, yeah. you get it at oh, the yeah. time, yeah. but but it stays with you. It stays with you. Yeah, yeah. like some of the things I just said and yeah. you just said. Well, of course. And yeah. even 20 years from now, you'll yeah. be thinking about those oh, things yeah. and, and they'll still have a new meaning. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty genius of, of, of his uh, teaching to, to not... You know, one or two people, you might say it's, mm -hmm. oh, not a fluke, but you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, he just reached those people. But it's that's a everybody. consistent, yeah, yeah. And like pretty much everybody, he, he, probably ninety nine percent of his students. He's had a profound effect on, yeah, ninety nine percent. I of the think students probably I haven't met one yeah. that everybody I've ever, <laughs> everybody that I've ever met has had positive things to say about him, and they're like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know. It's yeah, very what, yeah. What, it, what a mind blowing experience! What a yeah. life changing experience! Exactly, it just has such an impact on everybody. And that's about who he was as a as a as a person in yeah. his journey. Yeah. And uh, I remember he 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 said he stopped he stopped drinking. Yeah, he told me this as well. Back in 1975. He's, yeah, when he was yeah. in his mid forties. Yeah, he and said so, he was so that party, and then the next day he said to Aisha, "I said that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to drink anymore." Wow. And Aisha had said to him, "I knew this day would come." <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I think I think because of that, I mean, Jim's been looking at. He's eighty seven now. Is he eighty seven? Yeah. He's been he. The fact that he started really looking after himself then yeah. in the mid seventies, it it adds it adds twenty years to your life. Oh yeah. You know, he became a vegetarian and all that because of the Sufism and everything. And Here's one thing too I want to say on this yeah, on, yeah. On, on tape is is that he. Okay, this is a story about Tony Robbins. So Tony Robbins. When he turned 50, a lot of people said, oh, now you're going to slow down now mm -hmm. because you're 50. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to, probably not going to keep the same schedule you once had. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to participate in that. Like, I don't want to, I, 
I don't want to start slowing down. Yeah. So what he did was he he thought, who's like 50 above that I can meet personally? Because when you meet with people personally, mm-hmm. uh, they, they, you know, profoundly affect you. Like it, it, it does something to you when you meet face to face with people. It rubs off on you. Of course. So he sought out, I think, I don't know, 10 people that were doing not what average people do when they age. Like this eighty year old woman that was like a surfer and this guy in his seventies that's like a like a uh you know, a bike, like a amazing cyclist right, that, right, you know, right. does mountains or something. Yeah. And uh and these people and they reset his his definition of, of what the process of aging meant. Yeah, exactly. Because usually it's oh you're retiring when you're sixty five yeah. and blah 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 and it's the but what about that 10% that don't yeah. participate in that and that don't share those beliefs and values and maybe they, even other cultures, like there's yeah. other cultures that think yeah. you get better as you age, yes. not yeah. that you you just degenerate yeah. and you're not, you're not like, uh, you know, like I, I, I volunteer at seniors homes and I do mm-hmm. drum circles yeah, with seniors. Yeah. Uh, a lot of seniors are just forgotten and yeah. neglected, yeah, it's, that's, but, uh, but other cultures don't look at it exactly. like that. So when I saw Jim, I was like, 23 24 that was the that reset what i thought being 80 would be yeah and he was like in 75 at the time yeah i think for me it was 78 yeah yeah uh, yeah, no he he was in 76 he was in mid 70s at the time you started studying with him 70 yeah exactly 76 years when i started studying with him he was 69 1996 he was 69 okay okay and then then, because he was born in 1927 and yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. So seventy five. I just got this total exuberance from him. Oh and yeah, youthfulness. Doing what you love. Yeah. Uh, like you said, the vegetarian thing. Yeah. Con- like the the concept of kaizen, like constant improvement. Like yeah. you said, like as you go but towards your. The concept? Oh, kaizen. That's a Japanese word. Oh, it means it means constant and never ending improvement. It's a great oh. word. Kaizen. K a i z e n. K a i z e n. Okay. Yeah, okay. and like we, Jim said, this constant. Uh, like as you go towards death, you're constantly cleansing and, yes. and, and improving and, yeah. you know, three fingers pointed back at yourself and all that. <laughs> so it's like you're never, uh, never done improving. He was, he had the, you know, the gym thing downstairs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he borrowed my Steve Smith DVD. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause he's like, Oh, I want to check that out. <laughs> he said, he can't swing that, but he's, but he's got it together. He was a big fan of Brian Blade. And, yeah, that's right. Guys, but he's thought Steve. He's like Steve's at the, doesn't swing, but uh, but but very good. But but uh, he likes Ari Holding too. Yeah, and Jake yeah. Hanna and yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's yeah. like he he you know yeah. uh, I think he would said Max Roach like doesn't swing but great drummer. Yeah, he said yeah. The, the concept. That's something yeah. we could talk about too. But but that that reset my definition of what. Uh, you know my time with him like because he's an extraordinary. Person and he also had the saying. I'm sure he said it was you. He said, that, you know, he say, "Hey Jim, how you doing? How's it going?" And he'd say, "Every day better than the last." Yeah, you ever said right. to you? Yes, yes. Isn't that yes, great? Yes. <laughs> and he also said, "When I so every day better than the last." I still yeah. use that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And here's something profound too. I, I this is after lessons. So this is at the the, the when Metalworks uh, honored him with a lifetime achievement. Yes, yeah. So this is uh, 2012, yes, I think. September 2012. And uh, he. Uh, okay, so this is after Aisha died, maybe a year after that. Because Aisha died in... 11? 2010. 2010. Yeah. So it was the first time I'd seen him. And, yeah. Uh, what do you say, you know? Yeah, And yeah. Uh, so I think I said, my, you know, something like, my, my thoughts are, yeah. you know, I'm thinking about you all the time, and, uh, and uh, you know, how are you, how are you doing? Uh, I know it's not... The best circumstances to ask that, or or some something like that. Yeah. Like, what do you what do you say? You know, yeah, yeah. and and he just said, uh, he said one moment at a time. That really hit me. Mm-hmm. One moment at a time. One moment at a time. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what a lesson to go through. Sure. Uh, something devastating like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like just, like that. yeah. So I've I've said that to so many people. <laughs> That I don't know what what do you say? Like I had a friend that lost a friend to suicide. Wow. What do you say? And, know, that, and yeah, it's like yeah. one one moment at a time. Yeah. That's a, just such a it's such a uh, that's such a powerful statement. So that that really stayed with me too. So mm-hmm. each day better than the last, and and 
one moment at a time. He had so many sayings like that. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, when you, again with the face, the Facebook yeah. thing is neat to refer to because you just see all these yeah, yeah. Con- postcards yeah. in a sense, yeah, yeah. collected in one yeah, in one uh, shot, yeah. almost like a collection of emails or thoughts yeah. or written statements. And so many of them, like he said this, like you know Hallmark could do the quotable Jim Blackley. <laughs> Like yeah, set. Yeah, he, he probably yeah. has like 30 quotes oh he does he does man. like each you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, one yeah. moment at a time you totally that's yeah, a great quote yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah that's awesome um, I wanted to ask you as I was talking about earlier uh, with regards to um, the ride symbol mm-hmm. as the voice of jazz drummers and also you know the ride symbol is interesting because it it calls us as a jazz drummer in the same way that the snare drum backbeat in rock and pop music calls us. Mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right? Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. And there's there's, there's 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 a um, a drummer and a professor of of uh, I guess comparative literature and pop culture and cultural studies named John Mort. He wrote a great book called Percussion. Uh, beating, striking, and something else. Okay. Uh, titled John Moore. You, you, you I think be, I've heard of that book. Yeah, players. you'd be interested in this book. Uh, he gets into a lot of cultural theory, you know. It, 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 if you're not totally initiated in that sort of thing, it, it, it could probably be a difficult read. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of footnotes in there. So, But it's interesting. He, 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 did this, he did this analysis of the rock and roll backbeat. And, wow. and he was using... Um, and he also did an, he also did an analysis of the Rolling Stones song uh, "Get Off My Cloud." Yeah. And he was just talking about how the backbeat kind of draws the listener in, but it calls the listener in the way that the ride symbol calls the listener in jazz. Uh-huh. But it also it also helps to uh, that that call is also um, a call for for identity. You know, and, yeah, and, and and it's 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 absolutely, and that and that's that's one of the things that I want to touch on in this thesis is how many people are drawn to the instrument because of a, a particular component of the instrument in some ways that draws yeah. them to, to to listen to it and eventually learn how to play the instrument and then participate mm. in the whole act of musicking that the musicologists call musicking, which music-ing. is just the, which is just the act of either listening to music or performing music, uh, dancing to it. I love it. Music king. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, the, 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 um, just, just the call, the, 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 the evocation of the ride symbol and, and the, the subjection of the ride symbol and how that draws you in, 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 into finding your identity as a jazz drummer with a backbeat. We could take a, We could take all kinds of rock drummers we, we know of and love and it's that, Backbeat man, yeah, Bonham, <laughs> yeah, Al Jackson, yeah, Stuart Copeland, you know, Manu Caché, Vinny. <laughs> there's that, there's that backbeat that defines that, that rock, yeah, you know, and, yep. and that you know, that rock pop thing. And it's very, it's, it's in, it's in, it's everywhere. That backbeat's everywhere, it's so much a part of us. The way that the clave, the way that the song and the room economies are, are, yeah, part, of, are yeah. part of are part of the Cuban thing, yeah, and and maybe the African bell patterns, or the way that the way that you know the the, the ride symbol serves the same function in uh, in jazz. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you this: I mean, did 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 Jim's teachings um, help you to develop an identity, so to speak? Although or there, you know, there's, there's, um, because you can look at, you can take several Jim, you can take several Jim Blackley students, and there's, there are common traits with each student, but in the same sense, because each student is unique because of who they are and, and their upbringing and their background yeah. and their DNA and everything, that's what makes everybody different. It's like what we talked about earlier. You're, you're putting yourself into every stroke. Yes. So that's a really good question. It, well, let, let's 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 compare it. Yeah, Any musical it. question. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a great concept to talk about. I know, I know. I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to word myself correctly. Oh, it's massive. Okay. Like like you're getting into 
like that we're all you know if you look at a like a snow the biggest snowstorm mm. uh each in each snowflake is an individual snowflake yeah or a great beach every if you look sand. under a microscope yeah every yeah. grain of sand is yeah. unique and if yeah. you, you ever seen books on like like a, a, a of uh snowflakes under a microscope no I'm go on google tonight okay, and look at them they're it freaking it. beautiful wow. like and they're just, each one is like a work of art you wow. can they're just snowflakes under yeah, a microscope yeah, yeah. same with grains of sand yeah they're like like sculptures yeah, right yeah. like like the grand canyon wow. ones. so we're like that as people and i saw this one experiment where there was 10 people lined up behind a drum set in a in a vertical line like that and the, the whole thing was just to play four bars of time okay with no fills or anything a just a rock beat just okay. boom smack okay okay four bars four and now i'm going to pass the sticks to the guy behind oh. me and I was in the audience watching this experiment, and then someone else would sit down. Yeah, Without yeah, stopping yeah. the time, yeah. they kind of yeah, do it right. Yeah. They do four bars of that, and then this the person George. kind of attach <laughs> to, to it, right? And it's just, yeah, well. so don't change anything, though. So it's yeah. the same beat, yeah. just boom, schmack. Yeah. Don't add ghost notes. Make it the same. So we got the same beat, same notes, rather. Yeah. Same dynamics. Same tempo. Same tempo. Yeah. Same... Uh, Sounds, yes, yeah. hi hat snare, yeah, yeah, yeah. same sticks, yeah. same head, yeah. same okay. paddle, okay. same equipment, yeah. everything's the same, and they're even trying to be the same. So mm -hmm. it's like, don't, yeah, don't just play the same thing for yeah. same uh, form, yeah. it's all four bars, and it's fascinating. You should try, try to experiment, yeah, 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 everybody sounds different, exactly. It's exactly. so crazy, yeah. So you yeah. can't even, so really, what's happening to get your sound. Uh, I think Freddie Gruber taught this a lot. It's like, yeah. it's not, if I hit a drum, what made that sound? So it's wood hitting, in this case, it's plastic. Yes. Yeah, right? The of the pan. That's what is making the sound. Yeah. It's the contact between those yeah, two. Yeah. But that's not actually what's making the sound. What's, or dictating the sound. Uh, obviously, that's a part of it. But what's really dictating the sound is everything that happened in between mm -hmm. In between the stroke, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really and and what what happens in between the stroke, yeah, or what dictates the motion is individuality, yes. and you know there's that bon the John Bonham story of he went to a kid's birthday party or his son Jason, yeah, yeah, yeah who was yeah, twelve yeah. or something, yeah. and he just played for a second on the on that that other kid had a yeah, drum set, yeah, yeah, and he so John played yeah, and the yeah. the father that owned it he's just like like. He heard him playing yeah, in his yeah, basement. Yeah, it's like yeah. that's that's John Bonham. Like, yeah, I, exactly. like that's the that's, that's that right. Zeppelin sound that's right. on my kid's shitty yeah, yeah, yeah. Westbury. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's wild, yeah, eh? Yeah, like yeah. imagine that same set that yeah. you heard. Yeah, I know. Your kid, your eleven year old kid playing. Yeah. Then John Bonham comes to your yeah. house and plays it, and he sounds like him. That's right. And he didn't even that's tune right. in. Right. So Jim knew that. And if you think of music as a language, mm -hmm. okay, because yeah. music is a language, yeah. right? Exactly, that's right, yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, the rhythmic sure. alpha. Yeah, sure. it, it really is a well, language, anything, right? Anything, anything. Exactly. Rock, so, Latin. for sure. Yeah. So what makes you sound individual when you speak? You could say it's the English language, but it's your way of, it's like what's what's behind the words kind of. Mm. And that's what Jim got is like he would, he, that that's why who you are as a person came into play so much into his lessons. Yeah. Yes. And so so what can come out of that is is you, you're gonna you know like in other words the things he taught we were talking about before like that like leaving space. Yeah. If you leave, let's think about it in English. Just compare music, music to English. Any musical question you can pose as a, as a language question. Yeah, or exactly. in my case, yeah. <laughs> in my case, it's only English. Yeah. But if I leave space in my words, because I'm big about what 
words I choose to use. Mm -hmm. Like I don't use the word problem. I use the word challenge instead. Oh, yeah. I don't use the word can't. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah. use the word hate and stuff yeah. like that. Like Excising all the negative words. Right. So <laughs> right. So I'm yeah. I'm yeah. trimming like you yeah. trim a hedge. Yeah, like I'm exactly. I'm, I'm uh, pruning my yeah. my language. And what is left? Yeah. More of me. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, right. well, like, sort of like, oh, shit, man. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, wait. Like, Joe, like, check this out. Check this shit out. Okay, so what I just gave you was, I had an idea, but it was surrounded by so much, oh, so much bullshit yeah, that yeah. you can't really see who I am. Yeah, that's right. But if yeah. I really take a moment, you see, and leave space and... And really choose my words carefully and try to prune away the words that don't matter and the words that aren't really. Remember, we talked about commitment. Jim yes, was like, You've yes. got to mean, we saw it in the notes in the first yeah, lesson, yeah, yeah. mean 100 per, and 10%. Yeah. Every, or remember, he said, Don't waste a note. Yeah, don't waste a note. So compare it to language, don't yeah. waste a word. If yeah. you don't waste a word, yeah. let's say this is the last night of your life and you, you know you're going to die at midnight. You will not waste a word. Like, yeah. you make a phone call, you will. Make you, you you know you will be super hyper conscious of every word yeah, that yeah. you hear yeah. and every word that you speak. Yeah. And what will what will be left is you, Joe. Yeah. Joe will be left yeah. more. Chris it's Russell. like exactly or the individual. Yeah. Yeah. There's the great uh, analogy, Joe. I call it the, the David analogy. It's it's uh, Michelangelo when he oh, yeah. you know the story when he yeah, yeah. when he uh, made his sculptures. He said, like he was given a big slab of yeah, marble yeah. that other artists didn't want, like the, the type of uh, yeah. marble that he used. But he, he said he saw the sculpture already inside and he was just removing the excess marble. Wow, Isn't that right. cool? Yeah, that I'm is just, cool. I, it's yeah. already there. Yeah. I'm just getting rid of the marble right, that doesn't right, need right. to be there. What's yeah. left is the David, the yes. beautiful yeah. uh, inner sculpture. Yeah. So that's what he did as a teacher. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like by yeah. making space by challenging you to look at yourself as a person because anytime you journal or you look at who you are and you face the like what we said the mm, shit like yeah, you, you look yeah. you said you're full of shit <laughs> right? like that's he doesn't mince words right yeah, yeah. and you look at like oh i am full of shit like, I, I got a lot of work to do exactly to, to, to purify yeah you. Get, exactly yeah. And, and kill the ego because like exactly. wait a minute i'm chris lasso <laughs> Like, who are you to, no, yeah. like I'm full of shit and I got a lot of work to do That's right. and I'm, and it's like, a hum, it's like, man, okay, now, now we're getting somewhere Yeah. and you, 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 oh. you do that, pro like think of all his teachings are the same, musical line, space, yeah, the, look the, at yourself. The concepts are all there. The concepts he are all there. He shares that with everybody. But exactly. The, the, the learning journey is unique for each student. Exactly. And, and I'm sure you'll do this is make, make a, you know, make a list of the common denominators that like yeah. space always, the things we talked about, yeah. right? Uh, inward looking and blah, blah, blah. What's left after those things is, is mm -hmm. the individual. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see in all of Jim's students. Yeah. Man. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is. Like, uh, like when I see you playing a gig, yeah. I'll see more of Joe than if you hadn't went through Jim, like, yeah, you know, yeah. that's what Freddie Gruber, and, uh, well, I, I know Jim said he was, he was, he was full of it and stuff, but like, when you see Neil Peart, and you see Peter, didn't Peter Erskine study this? Oh yeah, Peter, okay. Dave Wackel, Dave Wackel Rod Morgan, yeah, Steve uh, Smith, Rod Morgan. I, I even, even Vinnie Coyuna, I uh, oh. believe, spent some time with, with okay. Freddie Gruber. Yeah. Well, when I see videos of, of those guys before and after, yeah, yeah. like, right? You see more of the that person mm -hmm. there, and Freddie also talked about what's in oh, between, yeah. right? Well, the, the the I've done I've done more a lot more research on uh, Freddie Gruber because I wanted to learn more about him, and he definitely had a method, and when he when he did I have a I have a passet clinic from nineteen ninety five with Freddie Gruber, wow! It was a tape that it was you could get this through Warner Brothers at one time, but Freddie this oh. is an interesting story I want to tell you the story it's great. Freddie had it removed. He had it taken off the market. Now, when I was, uh, the early days when I was working on Drummer's Choice, mm, I, oh, sorry. Mm, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so the early days when I was working at Drummer's Choice back in 1999, I had, uh, I think I was just looking through a Warner Brothers catalog, and I saw that there were these passive clinics that were available on yep. VHS. So there was a Jim Chapin one and a Freddie Gruber one. I ordered the Chapin one and the Gruber one. Then I got word that, the Gruber one wasn't available anymore. 
for, for legal reasons or whatever, I don't know. So in 2002, in November, I went to the PASI convention in Columbus, Ohio, with Dave Harvey and Drummer's Choice and a couple of the sales yeah. guys. Uh, Mike Taylor, the Junction drummer there, and Eric Clark. So anyway, I was there, and I thought, let me go to the Pass a Gift booth and see if they got a copy of this Freddie Krueger. Good thinking. So I went there, and they did. They had, they had two copies. Wow. Of it, so I bought one. So then I go into, I go back into the big convention room with all the dealers and everything. Who do I see? Groovers, there, wearing Buddy Rich's clothes, you know, wow. <laughs> hanging out with Adam, talking to Adam Nussbaum. Yeah. Right? So I go up to Freddie. His big glasses. He goes, yeah. so, <laughs> I looked at Fred. I said, Fred, what's this video all about? And he's like, where did you get that? And then he looks over at him. He's like, you see this kid right here? He's like, he's like I took this off the market three years ago. Where did you get this? I go, I bought it at the Pass and Gift booth. Okay, he says, look, okay, show me where it is. Because the, 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 I took this off the market. I'm not getting any residuals or royalties for this. Wow. So you have to show me where you got this. So what does Freddie do, Freddie? Freddie kind of like hooks my arm like he's my grandfather, you know? He hooks my arm and then we're walking through this, the big convention room. And who do we cross paths with? <laughs> Tom Valero. <laughs> Dom, Dom sees us walking kind of like, you know, like this sort of like per, this paternal like grandfather, grandson yeah. type of thing. And he looks at us kind of strangely, right? It was just so surreal. And this is in the 90s? This was in uh, 2002. Oh, okay. November of 2002. Okay, okay. So I, I, take, I take Uber to the, the, the gift booth. And he says, he says, you see this kid here? He says, he bought this video from you. And, and, uh, and um, if you have any other copies, I want them. And, and I, I'm going to give them to the PASIC authorities. I don't want you selling any copies of this. So then he takes, wow. the, he takes the other video. He gives it to the PASIC authorities. I was with them the whole time. And then I asked him about lessons. And, uh, I never t and I regret it. I never did take a lesson. I regret that. Um, he gave me, he's like, ah, no, I don't teach. And then he said, okay. And he, he, he gave me his New York and LA phone numbers. Wow. I, I never called him. Anyway, so he unwraps my video. Yeah. And he writes, with a black marker, he writes, Joe keeps swinging. Wow. And, and, and it's... And you have that. Yeah, I have that. And, and, and anyway, the, the vi see, this funny thing about this video is he told me, I took it off the mark because he, says, he said, I don't like the way that it turned out. I think he had broken or injured his arm. He took it out of the, the sling, and and he just he was just basically Freddie was just talking. He says a lot of cool things, but it's like he's talking in circles a lot of the time, and he doesn't sh he's not showing you anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's very the whole thing's very mysterious, right? So anyway, me and Gruber was like was cool, and he was an interesting guy, and then that left a, that left an impression on me. I regret not calling him and taking a lesson because what I had heard is that he said to me, he's like, I charge a hundred an hour. Yeah. But these guys, like, you know, Wackel, these Steve Smith, these guys who probably see Gruber every four months or whatever. Yeah. You know, those, those they, you know, they got the bread. They go, they go see him in New York or LA. Yeah. They give him a thousand bucks. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I'm thinking, God, if I'm going to, if I'm going to spend like, 10 hours with Gruber. I want to save money for this, man. <laughs> and you got to go there. Yeah, I think you got to go yeah. to New York, LA, if plane ticket, the hotel, whatever. Who, who knows? Maybe I, I never did it, and I regret it now because I think it would have been really interesting to have taken a lesson with him. It just would have been an interesting thing. Aside from that, I, yeah, I've talked to other people, and they, they would say things like, I think Gruber was just full of shit or whatever, but he wasn't. That guy was on to something. He, he had a remarkable, just in the same way that Jim does and the other master teachers, Gruber had a remarkable way of watching you play and, 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 and just knowing exactly what you need yeah. in order to fix those little physical hang-ups or those things. could have been a mental thing, a physical thing that was just getting in the way of your flow, you know, of, of, and, and harnessing that energy and the time flow and everything. Yeah. And it very much, with, with Gruber, it was very much about the Tai Chi aspects of playing the drums. And there's, there's, in fact, there's um, a student of his from LA named Bruce Becker. You ever heard of this drummer? No. He made it. He made, he released a DVD recently. I bought it last summer when it came out. Mm -hmm. I ordered it directly from Bruce. He released uh, a DVD because he studied with Gruber for many years, and he also spent time with observing the way Gruber taught the other students, mm. and, and very much probably like in a setting like this, yeah. where Gruber would be teaching and Bruce would just be hanging around and watching Gruber do his thing. Yeah, yeah. So he made a DVD, and he's, he's talking about a lot of these concepts, and he's demonstrating the techniques that Freddie taught. So, so you know, I, I ordered this thing from Bruce, he said, it's well, it's well made, he sent it to me and I watched it, 
And I'm telling you, I was, I was just hooked on this thing, and I was wow. watching it repeatedly, and, 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 and thinking, oh, okay, oh yeah, all right, <laughs> this is, it's eye-opening. And I thought, Gruber, had, he, had, he had a concept. This guy knew what he was doing. He knew he he definitely had to approach to playing the instrument. He was musical. I, I know Dom. I think sometimes Dom would say things of funny things about Gruber and stuff like that. Well, I think I don't think anybody would deny that. Yeah, yeah. Freddie was. From he was what I know, like, none of a kind. <laughs> Buddy Rich said, "You're none of a kind." Well, he's really eccentric. And, yeah, and, yeah, and, uh, yeah, which is awesome, <laughs> and you know, chain smoker, and yeah. and and so I think. Uh, I don't think anybody. I think it's all kind of in good, yeah, yeah, like good nature, yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe they mean that his message is good, but sometimes the way that he gets it out, yeah. Yeah. he doesn't. I don't think he bothered to refine. No, you know, no, he, you no, know no, what I mean. He didn't write he a didn't, book. No, no, he did. He never. He never wrote a book. And it's interesting. The band leader Don Ellis was working with Gruber probably in the seventies. Gruber was helping him arrange some charts with odd meters and stuff. And then um, Don Ellis had said to Gruber, why don't you write a drum book? And he's like, no. He says, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it, the drum book is unique for each student. Oh. It's, a personal, it's a personal learning journey for each student. So one book isn't going to cater yeah. to, to, to every student. Which I, Don saw that as an excuse. He was just making, Freddie was making an excuse for not writing a book. Can you yeah. imagine how legendary that would be now? I know, I know. You know what? I book. wish. And you know, Gruber even said to me, this is, yeah, I'm recalling this now. He even said to me, I asked Freddie, Freddie, you're going to make a video? He says, Yeah, I was going to make a video for um, for Hudson Music. Yeah. Back in the day, he was going to do something. Yeah. And, and he never did. And he never yeah, he did. He died, yeah. And it never materialized. And it's a shame because. The only real clip that you have of Gruber demonstrating any technique is in that Dave Weckl, Carl Fisher video. From yeah, 2000, that's right, that's right. He's, and he, the drum channel. Yeah, he, he yeah, was brought yeah, in. yeah, I've watched those, I've watched yeah. those. Those are, those, are, those are really good, too. Um, and Neil, didn't Neil bring him yeah, in? Yeah, with the drum channel. Yeah, there's, there's a drum, was that the drum channel? Yeah, there's, a, there's the drum channel, there's the drum channel stuff. There's the drum channel stuff. But, the, yeah, it would have been nice if Gruber did did make something, yeah. just, just to leave something behind. I agree. You know, yeah, I think that's what, and, and apparently his apartment was complete chaos. Yeah, yeah, I heard. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably what I think those guys meant. Like, yeah. the, the message is good, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't like, a, he didn't have his shit together. Maybe. No, 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 he was, yeah, he wasn't in, in respect, I yeah, say that yeah, with respect, yeah. but, and, yeah. he, and he wasn't like a player. He wasn't too. an active player. He yeah, like Jim Blackton player. wasn't a public player, but he was a player. He played. Jim did, and he, did gig a lot. He and he worked play. on the craft. Yeah, yeah. And Chapin, yeah. of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. you never seen without a pad. Yeah, and Joe, yeah, Mar yeah. Joe Morello, obviously. <laughs> yeah, Morello, man. Yeah. So all those guys, yeah. and, and whereas Gruber, so I think that's what those guys yeah, meant. Yeah, Gruber, Gruber kind of just. When they say he's, you yeah. know, but. I don't think anybody would deny that he 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 brought he, like look he, at his track record. Of, he had of, he, yeah like look, was that was probably his strength. Like when yeah, he was one on one with yeah, you, yeah. he'd say the right thing yeah, to you. This is exactly, that would open your mind. Exactly. This is what got me thinking. I'm thinking to myself: Steve Smith, Dave Weckl, Neil Peart, Peter Erskine, and others. They sought this guy out for knowledge, wisdom, of course, and, yeah. and technical information on how to play the instrument. These guys were all established drummers. But they're obviously seeking. A, they're, they're, they obviously want to improve and get better, you know. And 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 they're seeking out Freddie Gruber. Yeah. And they're really into his thing. So I'm thinking there's got to be something to this guy. Of he's course. Not, yeah. He's obviously when you see little clips of him, he's not. He's not really. He talks about concepts about dancing off the surface yeah. and all this stuff. But that no, um, that's probably not his. His talent. His talent is yeah, probably yeah. when you're in the room with yeah, him that's and he watches yeah. Joe play. Exactly. And he, he knows right what to say to you. That would have been that that's would probably that, that's what that's why that's why I regret not taking a lesson with him. I'm wondering What would he have said, yeah. What would he if I sat and played for and you know what the funny thing is, Chris? In my mind's eye, sometimes I would I would picture that in my mind's eye. I'd be with Freddie and thinking yeah, I wonder what would happen if I was in with a lesson with Gruber and I played for him and what he would say. And I think what I was doing, in essence, is I was, I was planting the seed for meeting him again, and I never did. Mm -hmm. I was sending the thought waves out. Yeah. I think at some point I was going to end up on his doorstep, 
but I never did. But look what you got. You got yeah. all the time with Jim. Yeah, sure. No, Jim no, was no, like no, your, yeah, your he groomer. Was, he, he was my groomer. He was yeah. my groomer. But I'm yeah. glad I met Freddie. I'm glad that I met him. Yeah. And the little bit of time that I did spend with him, that made an impression on me. And yeah. I, and, I, and I thought to myself at that time, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's interesting. That's fantastic. He's whatever, whatever, I don't care what people say. I yeah. met him. I spent some time with him. He was very nice to me. Yeah. You know, and that's what matters. That's what matters to me. That to to have a positive memory of him in the yeah. same way that Jim Keltner or Ian Wallace or, or exactly. Joey Heredia or, or Dal Lombardi from DW or Neil yeah. Pert or any yeah. of these other guys, Steve and Dave and those guys who studied with him, they all have their fond memories of him. You know what I mean? Exactly. He, he, exactly. he was yeah. uh, he was life changing. I mean Neil, you know, Neil Pert went through a lot of shit too, you know, like personal, personal stuff with the death of his daughter, uh, daughter and wife. Mm -hmm. But I think in the same sense, Neil, Neil generally wanted to learn how to play jazz drums. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then and that's when he was making the Burning for Buddy CD, he asked Steve Smith, I'd like to study with a jazz drum teacher. Like, who, who can I seek out? Yeah, and yeah he said, right. he said See, go see Freddie Groover. This is the yeah. guy that I've been studying with. Go check him out. Yeah, know? yeah. And and um, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't really. Uh, Neil Peart's a fantastic rock drummer, one of the legends. Don't get me wrong; he plays rock drums really well. But he's not much of a jazz drummer. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just you know. He it, would be the first to tell. Yeah, he'd be the first to tell. He's not <laughs> much of a jazz drummer. You know what I mean? It's a. You watch him play jazz, and it's but these concepts are universal, like like the, yeah. the bringing out the well, individual. Yeah, yeah, but 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 when I look exactly, but when I look at Neil Peart, he does play differently than when he was younger. Mm -hmm. When he was younger, he was very he was metronomic, and he was into that really precise studio thing, and coming up with these elaborate drum parts and replicating them. Because he's self taught, and he and he said he said yeah he was self taught, and he set the he set the bar so high in terms of recorded performance and live performance. Put set yeah. the bar very high, yeah. and and he was just a, he was he was a stiff drummer, yeah. but really influential. I mean, he he inspired people worldwide, and he's Canadian, and that's massive in itself. <laughs> that this guy from St. Catharines yeah, 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 yeah. took an impact on so many people in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's something to be proud of as Canadians, I guess. Yeah, but. but um, you can tell after after studying with Gruber, he did start to loosen up more. He got into traditional grip. You even saw the way he would play the ride. There was more, oh yeah, there you was can see more, it today. Was, yeah, there was more of a dance. There yeah. was more of a dance in his playing. More of that whip and that Economy flow of motion. and that flow. Yeah. And it was affecting his feel. It was yeah. affecting his feel. You could hear. You could hear a difference. You could. You could tell. You could, exactly. It was detectable. It really was detectable. And I'm sure Getty and Alex were detecting it as well. Yeah. There's something oh, yeah. different about the way this guy is drumming feels. Yeah. Now. And you can hear it yeah. even to this day. So yeah, I'm thinking, sure. I'm thinking if if, it, yeah, if, if that's what Freddie imparted and, and 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 that sort of thing changed the way Neil Peart plays the time and feels the time now. I mean, yeah, Freddie had a positive impact on on Peart's development. Exactly. exactly. And I would always use that as an example for 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 you know I would I would tell guys who guys who weren't studying for yeah. instance, yeah, yeah. I would tell them look at Neil Peart. He's like. For a lot of guys, he's their hero. Neil, Neil's their the hero. Eternal, the, yeah. the eternal student. Yeah, he's their hero. But that guy is still learning and growing and developing. Yes, and exactly. Going, and, and going through changes and tweaking his playing and improving things and delving into other styles. He's constantly learning. So exactly. Thinking, look at Neil Peart. We deify Neil Peart, but he's he's human and he and he's he, he fails. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, 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 and he's learning. Like you know? doing the, you know, that, that burning for buddy thing. Yeah. He didn't have to do that. No. But you know, the first time he did it, how big a failure that was. Yeah. He said, I couldn't really hear the band. And oh, then that was, that yeah, 19, yeah, 1991 when he played. Yeah, yeah that, was that was a disaster. Was disaster. That, that was bad. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was not happening. That's, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, fail, yeah. fail fail forward. Like, you know, yeah, getting I, out of your comfort zone. I remember room. reading about that. It's interesting. I remember Neil saying... It was one of the modern drummers from back in the day. He said something. He was reluctant to do it because he watched the, the first set of videos, which 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 contained uh, Dave Wackel, Vinnie Calvino, Steve Smith, Louis Belson, uh, Greg Bizanet, and, and, and Dennis Chambers. So yeah. he saw those videos. What company? Like, he company. saw those videos and he thought, he was he was asked to do it and he was just like, I don't know, like I, I'm just, 
I'm just I'm a rock drummer. I'm not really yeah. I'm not I'm not one of these versatile guys who can cover all these different styles with e- with an equal level of competency and authenticity. But he thought, okay, there's the word challenge. This yeah. is gonna be a challenge, but I'm gonna embrace it. Yeah. And, and and he did, and he went and he did it, and yeah, I mean to this day. A lot of people talk about how it was it was a pretty shitty performance. <laughs> then, though. Then, but then, look, and yeah. now when he's doing yeah. his solo, yeah, he's, yeah. he's got that, that uh, yeah. swing part at the end. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that's part of it. And look solo. how at the Burning for Buddy thing yeah, yeah. he took on after that. Yeah. So it... It, it evolved. It, and it brought him out of his comfort zone exactly. and, it, and it added so much to his playing with Rush. So, yeah, yeah. So that's... The it's, a positive, yeah. it's a positive thing. And Groover was definitely, just going back to Freddie and, and his impact on drummers... It, it goes back to that. Groover, I think, was... Neil was ready to redefine himself. Exactly. And and as the saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Yeah, and I, and, I felt and, that... And, 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 yeah. I felt that with Jim, how, how he... That, that's a funny thing, how... I'm sure you share this and yeah. other people, like, when... How that came to be. Yeah. And yeah. it was a total... Oh, yeah. When the student's ready, the teacher. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden... Remember, you were asking me how it kind of came to yeah. be was a few coincidences and, and timing and then I think I wrote him I think I wrote him an e- email and then you know because you gotta kind of audition to not audition but but you don't just show up yeah, you gotta you gotta yeah. get it you gotta get scheduled in yeah there. yeah so yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so when the absolutely when the student's ready the teacher appears yeah, yeah. that's awesome yeah um, okay let me see I think, yeah, I think... Uh, that was good. I think you answered everything. I actually have to get to a, a session soon, no, but no let, me, let me end with this one thought. Okay. It's and how, then, I, then I just wanted to quickly ask you sure, something. Sure, sure, yeah. About, you, just, uh, about yourself. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, you ask first, and then I'll... No, I just wanted to know, um, where, were, where, where were you born? Uh, where? Yeah. Were you I was born to... in Oshawa, actually. So you were born in Oshawa. Yeah, Oshawa, well, when, and then... What's your birthday in the year? June 28th. So June 28th. June 28th, 77. 1977, yeah. born in Oshawa. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then uh, my dad was in radio, so we moved around a little bit, and then we moved to Barrie. Okay. And then Barrie's like, if okay, I moved there when I was nine. Okay. So if you're... Now, I didn't know Jim was there, actually. Or yeah. Jim Jim was there, what, 2002? No, Jim moved to Barrie in 1999. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that, that cancels out. Yeah, he was in but, Toronto. Yeah. But I was... Uh, when I grew up there, it's pretty much the cultural, you know... Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I was sending away for... VHS tapes yeah, and stuff yeah, and practicing yeah. and then get to Toronto basically you know yeah. as, soon, as soon as I could so uh, that's why it's amazing what what an amazing city to and ironically I, I went back to Barry to go to, yeah you know, I know. Isn't to go amazing? back yeah that's yeah. kind of kind when, of when did you start playing the drums how old were you I was about eight or nine eight or nine yeah who was your who was your first drum teacher do you remember I was pretty much self-taught until, oh, self-taught. until Dom when until I was like Dom. 19. So 19, you saw yeah. Dom and... and I had and one, York. I had two lessons when I was 15 by what, just some, what, some guy okay, in there. Okay, okay. I don't okay, even remember his name. Okay. It's like, okay, just kind of, yeah, yeah. just play the songs. <laughs> okay, here you go. And he gave me a cassette of a couple, but... Yeah. Uh, and lessons were, that was $20. Back then. And my mom said, you pay for the lessons, you know, they paid for all these piano lessons, oh, but... Okay. And I was like, I did like two, and it's like, wow, just, just playing bands and yeah, and uh, yeah. So so really, Dom was kind of kind of my first teacher. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and that was that's when you were nineteen. Yeah, and you would go to New York to see him or in Jersey, yeah. in Jersey, right? He lived yeah. in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that was through the Cosa thing, actually. Oh, through the Cosa. So through yeah. the Cosa thing, you studied with Dom. Yeah, and and Jim is and Jim Chapin as well. Same thing. Yeah. Through Cosa. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and then Jim after yeah. that. So. All oh, right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but I was I was gonna uh, end with the way that he ended lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you might have a similar yeah, yeah, story, yeah. but he would just call you, or uh, this is how I've heard it from a few other people. I just got a phone call from him, and he's like, "All right, lad, you know he tells you how it is. Like this is how you you're gonna you're gonna stop lessons." And I'm like, "Oh, am I not? Am I not doing good enough? Am I not yeah, practicing yeah, enough?" Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, "No, no, no, no. You're you're gonna you're gonna call Brian Rudolph for piano." Yes, yes. And yeah. that was his, that was his message is always to mm-hmm. say like, you know, study the piano, study yeah, the yeah, piano. Yeah, that's know. where it is. Yeah, that's, that's right. Right, musical yeah, lines yeah, and yeah. the drummer that can you know play the, play the piano and hear yeah. that is yeah. it's gonna affect how they play on the drum. So that's right. 
I, I moved on it. I think I played studied with Brian Rudolph for like two years. Wow. <clears throat> from from Jim, but yeah. and and when he spoke at the Metalworks thing a couple he, years he ago, mentioned that, yeah. remember his yeah, thing? Yeah. He just said uh, the piano. Go yeah. back to the piano. That was I love that he is a consistent yeah. message. Like I know. if you yeah. see, if you yeah. saw Jim on the street right now, yeah. he would he tell you Jim, something. Yeah, what if I hear you're this great drum teacher? Yeah. What what can I do? Yeah. What 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 uh, yeah. tip can you just give yeah. me right? Yeah. So I'm in a grocery store line or something. Right. You know what he'd say? Go study, Go study again. Again. It's true. Exactly. It's true. And I'll bet yeah. you of every last student, a hundred percent of them, absolutely. He, he, absolutely. He, they got yeah. that message. Yeah. It wasn't like a suggestion. No, no. Man. You know what I mean? <laughs> when he phoned me, yeah, yeah. it wasn't like, uh, maybe you might want to like, that's what I meant about, remember we said about the students and being liked? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, I don't want to, like, uh, rock the boat or anything, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but uh, maybe check a piano if you feel like it, but you don't have to. No, Jim was but Jim great. was like, you're not going to come back. Like, what yeah. teacher would do that? I know, I know. I feel I have a lot to give my students. Yes. So I can't yeah. really imagine saying to a student, stop yeah. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that's another thing of Jim's uh, genius as a teacher. It's like, you could think about that. He'd actually phone you up. I know. And say, you're not going to come anymore. You're gonna to go to this guy for yeah. piano, and that this yeah. is how it's gonna be. Yeah, but, exactly. And you would do it. Yeah, I know. It's I'll amazing. bet you most most yeah. most students did that. Yeah, that's right. I did for years. Oh, so. Jim. Yeah. Jim. When I saw Jim's at the gym at the metal work. Yeah. Uh, the metal works uh, ceremony there in September, he said to me, he "says Son, are you are you studying the piano?" Wow. And I said, I said, because he's been on he's been on my ass about that for years. Yeah. And I studied a little bit, but like. Uh, I, I've just been preoccupied with the university <laughs> stuff. So one of my goals is when I'm done with my master's and you know, all that, I want to get into studying the piano. I want to call either, uh, you know, uh, yeah, call Brian, Brian uh, Rudolph and, and yeah. get in there. and He's, really, the, he's the guy. Because it, it is the key. It, it is the key to everything. Being able to hear the melody, the harmony, the horizontal, the vertical, knowing the changes. Yeah. It'll, like Jim says, it will open up a whole other dimension yeah. in your playing. And, and it's a nice long term goal. Yeah, like it that, is. that's it like, is. oh, good for the next 40 years. Yeah, I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm going to go there. And he, said, and he just said, so. you know, he says, if you become like a competent piano player, that's great. It's just to be functional behind yeah. the keyboard. So yeah. you can sit down and play the melody and the chords. Yeah. And you know that it's, that it's, 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 it's taking the memorization of tunes to the next level as a drummer. Yeah. Because too often we, we just play the drums and we concern ourselves there's so, on the market there's so much drum oriented things yeah that we, we get so we get so lost in it and and, and it's just like well why why didn't we pick up the sticks in the first place yeah we picked Music. up the sticks in the first place to play in a band yeah to belong to be part of to be part of a group to find to find belonging why well, do it to get girls yeah yeah way. that's right yeah sure he said so i get it yeah that was the same motivation but you know <laughs> but, but to, to play songs that you love to play those Absolutely. to play those rolling stones and u2 songs or whatever in the garage oh, <laughs> you know? chris sutherland just said that yeah. in, in a clinic recently he's yeah. like i don't i don't want to be a drummer i want to be a musician exactly that plays drums exactly isn't that cool and it's all about yeah. it's all about more and more as time passes it's just like it's about the song yeah it's about the tunes and the piano is the key and exactly Exactly, it's about playing music. Yeah. It's not just about being a basement drummer yeah. or I'm just gonna solo. I think solo drumming is great. I love what Terry Bozzo does, and I love I love the other guys. And Jim taught solo yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. He said that to me once. Like, we got we got to bring your solo. Yeah, in soloing too. is important. It's extremely important. Being able to solo over the form. A musical solo. Musical solo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Chris, when was your last lesson with Jim? Can I just check that? Oh yeah, yeah. I just want to check that because I, I don't know if the um, um, let's see because. Let's let's so there, these are all the notes here. Oh, lesson twenty five. So it says here lesson twenty four. So, so lesson twenty five. Years with him, yeah. October twenty six. Oh, exactly two years. Two thousand and four. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, yeah, a lot of guys got five years, seven years. I got two. So yeah, seven and a half years. I studied. Wow. Yeah. So I got two. lesson twenty five. October twenty five. Twenty five yeah, lessons. October twenty seventh, two thousand and four. Mm -hmm. So you had 25 lessons with him. And that first lesson would have been... October 2001. Yeah, October... Or 2002. October 1st, 2002. Wow, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow, two years. Yeah, yeah, two years. Oh, so might, then, I, I think that's... Think that's Yeah, see how he, he got me to type. He got you to type. Mind. This is wild. It would start like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
this have is, them tight for next cool, lesson. Cool, man. This is so cool. It's just it's just organizing everything, you know. Yep. Wow, amazing, man. That was one thing, you know. You, you asked like what you get from them. You, that that was another. You had another thing. Like yeah. have have a have a standard, you know. Like like um, I say that to my students. Like when they just, you know. Got some rumpled up notebook and yeah, you know, yeah, forget I know, it. And I it's know. like and it's like yeah, you know, know have this. This is show show reverence and respect for the to what you're learning for the material. You know, yeah, the like, teacher's taking the time to sign this material and, and get you to organize yourself. Yeah, it's yeah, priceless. Right? Really. It is. Pri- like it's, it is. It's, this uh, is this. Right? Yeah, this is this is priceless. Yeah, don't be afraid of the drum or what you are playing. I love that. Syncopated roll. Save the accents. Throw the rest away. Enjoy yourself. Use crescendos. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is all about the accents. We want to be as musical as possible. Molar stroke. Let your hands drip like when your hands are wet, wow. and you shake them. <laughs> wow, it's heavy, man. It's it's gold. Yeah, eh? yeah. Oh, feel comfortable. <laughs> wow, this is gold. Oh, this is great. See what I mean with the cockiness? Yeah. That's what I was telling you. That's right. Look at this. Terry Clark was cocky when he was young. You got to make people believe in what you were playing. Yeah. Ooh. That's a good one. Eh? Give the audience. This is important. Yeah. Give the audience the same feeling as looking at a wow. great painting. Wow. If you know nothing about painting, it still moves you. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful, eh? Wow, that these are these are quotes from him, eh? Mm-hmm. Wow. And these were written right after the lesson. So yeah, I yeah. Forgot him. Wow, it's amazing. So you got to go. Yeah, this is that story. Though. Yeah, the Jamaican kid story. Yeah, that's cool. Story about the all-black Jamaican band in New York oh. with a sixteen-year-old. Okay, this is what it is. A sixteen-year-old sax player sits in with the band, yeah. starts blowing all this nonsense, yeah, yeah, yeah. but plays it with total conviction, yeah, exactly. cockiness. Yeah. Plays this, plays the tune, looks at the band and says, "You guys ain't shit," and walks off. Yeah, Beautiful, yeah. total yeah. New York attitude. Terry Clark was cocky when he was young. You've got to make people believe in what you're playing. So Jim said, "Yeah." He said he saw the sixteen-year-old kid, and, he's, and he didn't play anything yeah. good. But he, but but he'd said like that. You know, the, like that attitude is is lacking sometimes yeah. in great drummers because they're too, kind of unsure of themselves. This is this is great, Bal Mahendi, you know, the the, the oh, chattering yeah. monkey thing. All of the answers lie within, so you're within mind. within the self. Jim's teacher, Bal Mahendi spoke of the monkey mind we all have 50,000 chattering monkeys within us what one monkey is enough <laughs> wow see this was this was some spiritual stuff yeah right? yeah spent life searching for yeah because you, 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 you were talking about Bao Mahayadin spent 40 years in the jungle yeah like that's the, what I know this was like a, yeah yeah what? yeah that was that was um, that was a mind blower man when he told me about that it's incredible man wow of all the teachers that I've studied with, I found them to be the most open-minded. Because Jim's, Jim's, to me, Jim's whole thing was about not getting yourself boxed into a corner, but having enough in the way of, of, of being aware of technique mm-hmm. and, and, and being aware of the various schools of thought and, 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 and just that physical approach. Yeah. And calling upon these different techniques when you need a specific sound. Yeah, yeah. Because Jim, Jim would say to me, don't think of yourself as a drummer anymore. Think of yourself as an artist. I don't know if he wow. ever told you that. I think it said like a, like a, like a dancer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think, think of yourself. Like I remember he would say to me, think of yourself as a painter. Think of yourself as a, as a potter molding clay. Yeah. You know, shaping the musical line. Think of yourself as a, a baker kneading dough. <laughs> yeah. He would texturize it when you when you're playing with brushes. And yeah. He would use these analogies, these amazing analogies. And, and analogies were amazing. And he yeah. would say things like, "If you need to scratch the cymbals to get that effect that you're after, then do that. If you need to kick the bass drum, yeah, so, bite the cymbal. Yeah, remember but, that? yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> I guess the thing is, is that the thing I liked about him was, is that that was just it. It was. It, you know, you have these various techniques that you learn, master them, they're in your toolbox, and you can yeah. call upon them when you need them. 